Hello everyone and welcome to Optus Oval, round 17, Richmond playing Hawthorne as we see the Hawthorne side sitting in 8th position trying to protect that spot against the Tigers. Coming out on the ground, there's Paul Salmon, Darren Pritchard behind him as they get to run through the banner. Tony Woods, the champion, the little champ, John Platten there with the locks. Nick Holland, Chris Langford, the veteran now, living in Sydney, working out of Sydney, getting the players together. And the Hawks break the banner. And they really are in superb form. Fantastic form after starting off very slowly. And welcome, Neil Curley. Thank you, Malcolm. And uh, I saw um, Hawthorne last week against Carlton. They have become a very confident side over a very short space of weeks. Uh, gone is the uncertainty. They are now confident with Sam in particular. And talking to Johnny Platten in the room before the game, this game, uh, the, their movement now is, is structured around Salmon because they, they know he can, he can get first use of the ball and, and they're moving with his hand direction and they've just, be, just become so confident with Langford also back to his very best form. And we have a look at the Hawthorne lineup with coach Ken Judge and the player you mentioned, Paul Salmon, having a terrific year and it really has brought Platts to life, Neil. His, his form's been terrific the last month. Yes, I, and I, I comment on... He's very smooth in his movement again. There's no restriction in his legs. He feels he feels tremendously fit, he said. He's got no injury problems, and he's turned the clock back a couple of years. Yes, very true. Also with us in commentary, Ian Major. Welcome, Ian. Well, it's good to be here, and it should be a great game. Ground conditions look pretty good, although Neil was saying that it's a bit soft on the outside. Yes, it is, Ian. Yes, the Hawks just doing their bit. Um, Nick Holland's been interesting, playing centre-half forward, uh, grabbing marks, capable of playing anywhere, centre-half back ruck. But he's been a very good player for them since an early injury trouble, Neil. Yes, I like him, uh, Malcolm. I like the way he goes after the football. As he doesn't, he doesn't care if he's if he's not set. He just he just flies a bit like yourself in the old days, where uh, you just you took the risk. He's backed into a couple of big marks last week, and uh, it was fantastic there. He's a key player, and uh, Bullis will have to do very well to hold him. As the Tigers roar as they enter the ground. And this Richmond side that had eighth spot last week, only to be beaten by Essendon. There's Matthew Richardson, the young star, 67 goals for the season. Nick Daffy in front of him. And the Tigers really, really do have to have some fight today. Matthew Knight's back in the side, now playing his third game. He'll be in acquisition. They break the banner, and the Tigers are here. That uh, loss to Essendon last week, Malcolm, must do a little bit to their, their confidence uh, to be five, six goals up at half time and then run over in the last half. It's not a good sign and there was a bit of uncertainty in their movement and also uncertainty in the way they controlled the ball and they, they've got a huge job in front of the day and of course so much depends on, on young Richardson and it's a lot to ask for this young kid to keep coming up every week uh, to control that forward line. Yes, of course there's their lineup, coached by Robert Walls, Brisbane Bears coach for the previous five years. And they finished in the final and eighth last year. A few changes they've made uh, into their team. Um, tap, tape uh, Sullivan and Tawny are out. And coming in more Howard, David Berg, and young Joel Bird, uh, Bo Bowden, I should say. Ian? I think it's Bowden. Bowden. As a matter of fact, I think that might be his father's old number, number 11, too, for his first game. So uh, he's had a couple down there. His, uh, his brother came down earlier. And he got about six games before he uh, finished with the Tigers, but uh, good to see him on the side. And of course, the other player out, Neil, I should mention, is Ashley Prescott, who did his shoulder last week. And uh, Ashley, yeah. if you're listening and ever get hold of this tape, it wasn't terrific, son. I was there. It was a tragedy for you. Yeah, but uh, hopefully a speedy recovery. Also, Malcolm, a late change for Hawthorne. Number 27, Daniel Chick out. And his place has been taken by young Jason Taylor. And you were talking beforehand about uh, the marking ability of Holland. Well, there's nothing like Richardson going for marks. He just goes from everywhere. He's almost uh, Peter Knight style of backwards, forwards, just let's go. When you're, every time he goes for the ball, you feel as though your heart's in your mouth. He's going to crash into the fence or hurt himself coming down. But he's so spectacular. You wouldn't have thought, Ian, that he's recovering from a knee operation. You know, a big knee operation from last year. And, of course, there he is. Jason Dunstall, the goal-kicking machine from Hawthorne. Unbelievable record this man has. 1,139 goals. Only 160 now. I say only 160 off the legendary Coventry. Gordon Coventry. Well, if he stays fit uh, and his enthusiasm stays up, there's no reason why he can't get that. I watched, uh, I watched him close last week. Jason now seems to be 
involving his movement around more of a team game than an individual game. Like five years ago, it was he knew he could get the footy. He was very confident with his hands, and he just made that uh, as an individual approach. Now, it's more around a team approach to bring players into the game around him. So all is in readiness now for the start of this game, and we really do look forward to eighth playing ninth, Richmond playing Hawthorne. bounce round 17 Richmond against Hawthorne Richmond going to left of screen and big Paul Salmon up against Justin Charles the two big fellas go at it Charles just gets his hand on it falls to Crawford kicks the ball towards center half forward free kick certain free kick to Bullis Holland pulled him back and umpire Mark Nash pulls the ball back goes out wide and finds Miranda had a terrific season Malcolm, I see Woods has a job on uh, on Campbell. He's starting to get some jobs, isn't he? Here's Miranda. Goes long. Salmon sits underneath it. Big pack of players. Huge. Comes through Woods. In over the top was Harford. Off to the running Platten. Platten goes on the left foot. Screws the ball around towards half forward. Hudson there with Gale. And Michael Gale happy to see it over the line. Some interesting matchups here. I notice Graham has Richardson. And uh, Langford has Brenton Gale in the forward pocket. Gale's a little surprising on Hudson. I thought they might have got a bit, bit more pace there as the boundary umpire throws it in. Salmon moves into the front position, gets a little backhander in front of the pack, comes out into open territory. A chase here. Trelevin gets the ball, handballs it out into open territory. The crowd cries for a free kick. No, says the umpire, sits into half forward. A foot down on the ground. Matthew Richardson battling down on the ground, trying to uh, grab it out. Couldn't do so. A handball to Collins. Collins has got the ball into open territory. He'll handball it off to Harford. Harford to Tellus. Tellus in towards the centre of the ground. Bounces out of the square. Holland racing after it for Hawthorne. Grabs possession. Fires up towards Dunstall. It's over his head. And the mark will be taken down there. And Gasper will get up to take it. That movement coming out of, out of defence by Hawthorne. That is something they did well last week. The running handball movement. Players lose here for Richmond. Charles dashes off. Now goes towards Knights. The kick's got enough carry on it. Terrific mark on Collins. Comes back onto his left foot. Now forced to play on. Kicks towards half forward. Really no one home. Mark Graham waits for it. He'll be happy to see this over the line and out of bounds. Knights, of course, Malcolm, is a, is a very key player for Richmond. Slowly working his way back in. Still favouring that ankle a little bit, but uh, if he can get over that problem, he'll be a key player for Richmond. Boundary throw in, 55 metres around from the Richmond goal. Gale taps it with his left hand. Crawford tries to get hold of it. Bond with him, caught in the tackle. Campbell, as he's so good at, quick kick. Richardson, two grabs almost. Called play on, and rightly so. Crummel with a searching left-handed handball to Crawford. Sets up Langford. Langford goes direct to centre-half forward. Holland back courageously as the pack came. Collins runs onto it. Here's a chance. Kicks and kicks to Hudson. Yes, Brenton Gale will have to pay attention to Hudson. He's, he's a pass master dropping back. Hudson kicked from just inside 50. Goes long. The goal umpire has moved across and only one point. So first score to Hawthorne and Paul Hudson. Ready. Gasper has the big job. Howard on the bench today, maybe is there as a reserve if things go bad for the youngster, but he's had a very good season. Waiting for the call, taking plenty of time. Callaway moves to the right-hand pocket. The umpire gives him the hurry up, and he finally delivers out to the Southern's grandstand side. Holland back over the top, but couldn't take the mark, and Big Bullis is there to take it. Swings around to the outer side, finds Miranda down there. There's two Tigers down there to only one Hawthorne, and Miranda takes it, swings back on the left-hand side and drives the right boot to center half forward. Up they come. Big fly at the back, and it's Paul Salmon to grab the mark. Had a great last couple of games. Brings it out to the northern grandstand side. A dash for the ball over here. Picking it up, and a good piece of work by Trelevin. A short pass it in, and Crawford running well. Takes the mark, drives to half forward. Hargraves on the ground has taken the mark at the 50-metre line. Hargraves back in the side today. And Hudson had crossed over to uh, give him a bit of support. Gets the lead, it'll just be a fraction high, but he's whipped it down beautifully. Jason Dunstall. Lovely hands by Dunstall, out in front of the eyes, and gave the fullback no chance to spoil that. Lovely kick as well, and that's what Dunstall does so well. The quick, sharp movement, strong hands in front of the face, 
and uh, he has been kicking very well in the last couple of weeks. Has been worried by a bit of injury, but still played the full 17 rounds so far. The captain of the Hawks comes in, passes the 50-metre line. Eyes set on the wall, and it's there for the opening goal of the day. It has opened up well this game. There's a lot of movement, and I think it's going to be a really high-scoring game, this one. They're playing open football. Platten's not being picked up at this stage, so he, he could be a very valuable player to Hawthorne, particularly if Salmon uh, gets on top of Charles. Change already here. So the Hawks lead by seven points. The only two scores of the game. Salmon gets it. Gets the tap. Campbell kicks it forward. Doing very well. Just pushing the ball down for Richmond was Holland. And falls to young uh, Powell. Powell, that's right. Yeah, the young for kicked five points in his first game. He made very good movement there. He saw the contest was going to take place. He cut across the, uh, the, the front of the pack as a half forward should and really, uh, really rove that ball very well. Yes. So the youngster gets it now. Crummel to kick in. Goes long towards Salmon. Oh, he's sandwiched by his Richmond players. The ball ends up effectively with Campbell caught high and will take the key free kick from just outside 50. Nothing wrong with that tackle. Uh, Campbell made the dummy to get around him and uh, he paid the penalty. Physically, that is. There's Anthony Condon. Richardson makes the lead. Ignored. Now Campbell goes long. Oh, it's hit on the inside of the boot. Goes towards goal. Will fly alone almost. And eventually... Three. Free kick paid high from Langford and really probably should have taken the mark in here. But a poor kick from Campbell. He really didn't give his forwards much chance. He's put it right in the pocket. But Brendan Gale. That was the opportunity, Malcolm, to hit the, hit the point of the square with that kick. Of course. Benny Gale runs around, kicks, and has missed. Only a point results. So their second point in about 30 seconds to Brendan Gale. And they trail the Hawks 7-2. to two. Crummel with the kick-in job once again. The former West Coast Eagle had a couple of chances. And this one at the moment is back with the Hawks. Made a move beforehand, I gather, Neil. Yes, uh, Gale's take, been taken off Hudson. I think Collins has a job there now. They've got some marking power up forward, uh, Richmond, with Gale and Richardson. And even young Holland there too. Crummel gets a couple of leads. Salmon is right out of centre-half back. He's been ignored and... He almost got to it, but it's been picked up on a little kick by Pritchard. will bring it out towards the wing. Members northern grandstand side. Graham is after the ball, taps it out in front of him. Powell is in there, but little Platten dips across in front, runs into the boundary line fence. The Hawthorne fans give a few cheers and a shout to uh, Johnny Platten, one of their most favoured sons. Woods races in at the last moment to pick up Campbell. Bond has Platten, the front of the pack. Justin Charles almost got in the back that time, and the umpire says, yes, it is in the back to uh, Big Paul Salmon. And Trelevin will pick up the ball and send it back to him. Holland's making a bit of movement at centre-half forward, now comes out to the flank, and that's where he'll put it. Hudson will stay down. Holland goes up, but there's plenty of reaching arms, and up over the top, big Justin Charles to put the fist to the ball and send it over the line and out of bounds. They've made another change, Richmond on, uh, on the dangerous Hudson. Kellaway is picking him up now. Boundary throw in, Hawthorne into attack, and a lot of kicks being directed at Nick Holland and being very competitive in front. And there is a great tap over the back. Falls to Knights, tackled. Bullis just charges through, unloads, unloads the footy, comes out to Daffy. Daffy to Bond, under pressure, kicks it high on his left foot, and a free kick coming down the ground. Dennis Rich pulls the free kick, and Nash goes off quickly back to Daffy. Searching kick to Gale. And has got it. Beautiful body work there, Malcolm. Beautiful body work by Gale. Held his shoulders very strong, kept the uh, Hawthorne boy away from him. Yes, he sometimes tends to bend his arms when marking Neil, but that was a great straight. straight yep. Terrific. I think there's been a change made here too by Hawthorne. I think Langford's gone back to Richardson, and Graham's come on to the dangerous Gale. But Brendan Gale will kick from 44 metres. Quite deliberate in approach. Kicks. Starting to drift across, but it's OK. First goal to the Tigers. 
He would need that uh, Gale for confidence. He has been down the last few weeks. His marking has been letting him down, but uh, we saw there well, a very, very strong, safe mark and a very good kick. That'll do his confidence a world of good. Now Langton. Here's the bounce back in the centre. One point the difference in Richmond's favour. One, two to one, one. A bounce out with Marinda chasing after the ball. Crawford in hot pursuit as they go to the southern grandstand side. Marinda, probably Richmond's best player last week. Handballs it off towards Kellaway. A little short kick doesn't go the right way. Picked up by Woods. Woods bounces it back towards the goals. Scragging down there and Dunstall has taken it. Forget about the scragging. The captain has wrenched it in with the right arm and goes back as... Gasper is right next door to the behind post and lining up. Well, it certainly wasn't a 50-50 ball because uh, Gasper had him, well, I thought, under control as far as body pressure was concerned, but Dunster, with that super class that he's always possessed, was able to pull that ball in a la Gary Ablett style, one, one handed and uh, super mark, and if he can finish it off, it'll be a great captain's goal. Already got one coming in for Hawthorne and his own second goal. Only a couple of metres out. Looks confident as it goes towards goal, but is he confident? Yes, he is. It just goes to show you, uh, Ian, how a, a misdirected kick coming out of defence can hurt you. That was a bad kick coming out of defence by Richmond. The Hawthorne boy picked it up and slammed the ball forward. And, of course, the dangerous dunce it up there, capitalising. A great start to him. Up it goes, Salmon gets it down on the ground, has a little flick out and Bond charges through, grabs the ball, drives it in towards the full forward for Richardson, outmaneuvered his man but spilt the mark on the ground, the Hawks defenders bounce, a handball comes to Graham from uh, Langford, a little left foot of the 50 metre line, will they get away? Woods, yes, has it away, out to Collins at half back and Miranda keeps him bottled up so he couldn't go any further, the handball off to Crawford, up to Platten, Platten just down on the defensive side of the centre but will get it over the top yet again for another grab, the mark is taken by Pritchard, Pritchard looking for a man, big salmon in the centre, Justin Charles spoils at the right time, trying to chase up, Crawford couldn't get there, little pal comes in, a left footer, a wonky one up towards the half forward line, Bond will make it good, gets it inside the boundary line, turns around, it's a two-man war down here, Richardson on his own with Graham and had all the running deal. Yes, Ian, if, if Richmond continue to bomb that boarding like they're doing, Richardson will be a focal point because he's just got so much class and he's not going to miss them all. He's going to get his, his share of percentage and uh, if they continue to play this type of football, he'll be kicking for goal quite often. Coming in, has improved his kicking dramatically, Matthew Richardson in the last summer comes in close to the man on the mark got under it a bit let's see what the result is and the richmond fans say it's good beautiful kick beautiful long goal by richardson and uh, I mean, he's just too good a player to be kept out of the game for the whole for the whole term of the game and uh, graham will have to be at his super best to hold this boy to under five goals today and i think the uh, the viewers will realise how important this game is to both sides, and in particular, Richmond. So the full forward's on target. Dunstall with two, and Richardson with one, and a point the difference, Richmond in front, as we'll have a rebound back in the centre of the ground. And getting up last is Bond. So umpire Dennis Rich this is, Andrew Coates with him today, and Mark Nash. And he's already done three grand finals as Dennis Rich. Tallis puts his head over the foot. He tries to go through. Salmon, terrific stuff on the ground. To Pritchard. They share it to Woods. And Crumble runs from half back. Goes towards half forward. And Holland puts up those big hands of his and grabs it easily. Goes towards Dunstall. Pushes him out. <laughs> One-hander! <laughs> well, Mark, I mean, you often occasionally see one. It's very rare to see two within the space of, say, four or five minutes. And once again, beautiful body work. But coming back to Holland, that boy needed that mark to get some confidence. He's been a bit down, and that will give him a lot of confidence, that one. But Dunstall, of course, is 
He's just super up there. Not doing much for Gasper's confidence at the moment, though. No, certainly not in. Dunstall will kick from 30. After a spectacular one-handed mark. Kicks. And it's just starting to fade. He's got his third in the first quarter. Well, now, of course, the pressure is put back on Ken, uh, on uh, Robert Walls now. How long, how much longer do I stay with Gasper? Uh, Dunstall's kicked three in the space of, what, ten minutes? And um, do I stay with Gasper or do I make a move? And who's he got to make? Maybe Burke? Uh, Howard. He's got Howard, Howard on the bench today, and that's what I think he's there for. Well, he may be used. There's the bounce with Hawthorne 3 one to Richmond 2 2 14. Taken out of the centre yet again. Tigers trying to get in there and a good bump by Burke. Puts a oh, hit the deck and Campbell gets a handball away to Bond. Hawthorne fans want the free kick as Daffy drives into half forward. An awkward bounce goes past Ben Holland. Awkward stuff there. Langford, crowd saying dropping the ball, but it's back in there with a quick handball coming out from Pritchard into open territory. Another backup, Crawford battling back in. Players dive on top of the ball. And everyone getting a pat on the back as no one's going to get a free kick against them for holding the ball and having it tucked underneath them. And Broderick gets up from the bottom of the pack and hands it back to the umpire. Well, this is a pressure match, this one. There's a lot of fierce body work out there and they're playing close body to body. Dennis Rich sends it up on the air. Good knockout by Benny Gale, but it didn't go to the right man. Pritchard forces it forward into open territory. Woods has had a great season for the Hawks. This rejuvenated his career. Falls back into the centre. Hargraves will punt it into the forward line with a standing torpedo. Up to centre half. Back it goes. Physical pressure forced the ball to the ground. Kelly, where he was grabbed. Knights will bring it out. Bullis charges through. Can we say like a bullet to the gate? And picked up by Michael Gale out towards the oh. wing. Salmon just put the fist out. Got it away from Justin Charles over the line. Where did those yards come from from Salmon? That was a tremendous commitment to make that spoil. It looked like Charles was marked cleanly. Boundary umpire throws it in and Salmon got the tap again, but kicked off the ground in mid-air by Bond. Well, another one down the ground. They've been watching the soccer too much at the Olympics and Graham gets it out, but it's brought back by Daffy. Langford anticipates well on his left foot, sends it out. A chase here for Andy Collins because Miranda's already got five metres on him and he can't make up the gap and Miranda swings around with the left foot of the Man. half quarter. Again, they've given the footy away, the Tigers, and Langford will make them pay for it. No, Gasper, good work, got in front of Dunstall at the right time at the 50-metre defensive line. Handballs it off, gets it out the half-back, coming down Kellaway, out towards the wing, and the mark will go to Benny Gale. Gale pushed his seed the three is that 50 meters well it's been it's been given i don't i didn't think it was myself but the umpire saw it that way against langford and uh pretty soft one well in fact uh, it's probably less than 50 isn't it because he's only made the 50 meter line and i'd suggest about 38 meters <laughs> once again of course this brings richardson into the game does indeed and he's one on one too oh you'll get this oh. yeah oh, oh. almost he was in the advantageous position and almost like Dunstall at the other end, pulled in a one-hander, Woods pushes it towards the boundary line and then smothered by Daffy over. He really was in the box seat then. Just didn't quite hold it down to the ground. It just gets away, never controlled the ball, Malcolm. No. A boundary throw between wing and half back for Hawthorne. Daffy kicks it up in the air. Collins goes at it. Oh, clever tap from Rogers. Now Burke's caught. And Crummel just doesn't let him go anywhere. Charles, uh, as I see it at this early stage, Charles is going to have to do well on the field play to hold Salmons to counteract his ruck work. Over the top, does well then. Gets it down to Harford, though. Kicks the ball back. Hargraves first there. Hands and knees. Burke just charges at the football. Pushes it into the path of Chris Bond. Bond on his left foot. Coming at it, Richardson. Langford does well by cutting across him. Gale's caught, and the ball caught in underneath players, and another bounce. Gee, this is going to be a great game of football, this one. Already, the signs are there. It's like finals uh, yes. atmosphere, isn't it? Mm. Gale, easy tap to Nash. Great Good. tap over. Back to Nash. Fantastic play from the Tigers. Great tap from Holland, and a goal to Chris Nash. I think you put that down under the term of productive teamwork. Malcolm, that was great play by the little fellow, the tap on, and then they 
He continued on with it, received back, and finished it off. Great goal. No doubt about it. Just back to Richardson, I was uh, thinking he's really had his hand on two marks that he's built. We uh, certainly forgive him for the last one because he was under great pressure from Langford coming across, but he's had uh, one other time over there on the forward line, had two hands on it. Here's the bounce, the scoreboard reach, Richmond 3-2, Hawthorne 3-1, finals like Miranda comes in, grabs the ball to centre half forward, looking for the high flyers, ooh, spill there, young Ben Holland was in front, had a little, little bit of a nudge out, and it's still kept in the Richmond forward zone. Yes, coming back to that uh, quote you made about Richmond, he, he is too grabbing a bit at the ball of late, and uh, he just needs to be able to really capture it on the first take. Benny Gale will take the ruck for Richmond. Salmon in there, gets it down to Condon. Condon dispossessed to the ball. Hawks share it around nicely. Get it out with a kick by Tellus in towards the centre of the ground. Charging down David Burke. No, nope. <laughs> everyone's crying for free kicks. Both Richmond and Hawthorne fans went up for a free kick there, but I couldn't see anything I would be paying. No, I think you caught it uh, right. Uh, this is there's a free kick down against Bullis to Holland. And it's been a holding decision down further. The umpire's going to bring play back. Holland will come back as the players further down the ground. And the crowd really making a noise here at uh, Optus Oval. They are right on song. Of course, virtually is the final for them, isn't it? Well, it's, it's been played under that pressure already. It's going to be, a, as I say, keep repeating a super game. This is Nick Holland with his brother Ben Holland, the younger one up the other end for Richmond. Ball falls to ground. Quick knockout. Crawford doing a bit of running, but already the umpire's found another free kick. It's coming back. And it's going to go Richmond's way, much to the light of the fans. And it's going to be Big Bullis, who is certainly showing some uh, physical presence in the game, to bring it out towards the half-back flank. Gasparri's found in front of the old Hawthorne stand, just delivers the ball before he was grabbed, falls to the boundary line. Nick Holland throws it back in. Campbell, good anticipation, charges through, gets it over towards Bond. Bond with the left hand, a hand pass, comes out towards Rogers. Rogers on the left foot into the centre half forward position. Langford couldn't hold it on the fingertip. Two Tigers collide, fall to the ground, and this leaves the Hawks an open stretch as Chris Langford, the veteran, comes up. And he's got nowhere to put it, and Kellaway's down there with a the ball. Kellaway breaks away, comes back to the wing. Charles sits underneath it and grabs a mark on wing. Off the Knights. Now runs himself into trouble, gives it off to Gale, needs support, got it in Rogers. Rogers goes long. Richardson comes at it. Oh, fantastic clash of players. <laughs> Hawthorne player is down. I don't know how fantastic that Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> the Hawthorne play doesn't reckon it's fantastic. But that's, that's the commitment of the players so, right. so tonight. They're just, they're, they're risking themselves. They don't care about physical injury. They're just going after that agate as hard and as fierce as they possibly can. And we're going to see a lot more of this with the players going down. Yes, yeah, Brendan Crummel there. Just seemed to take the wind out of his sails. Richardson did come hard at it. And, you know, I agree. It's a, it's a courage in football that yep. people, a lot of people don't think. Exactly the courage right. in the air is, is, is equal to the courage on the ground. Well, I think in that case, when you're going into yeah. blind territory and you, you know you're going to expect something, you don't know how hard it's going to be. It can be a soft one, it could be a hard one. But you must stay. Yes. Tap to Trelevin with his left hand. Goes over the top. Pritchard cleverly onto Condon. So the two veterans work it around the boundary line and out of bounds. So half back flank for the Hawks. Right half forward for the Tigers. As Crummel just gets his attention and starts to move back towards his man. A bit, bit gingy, isn't he? Very gingerly. Boundary throw in. Charles tries to get him under, crashing through his players. Salmon doing some good stuff on the ground for the big fella. Falls to Bond. Wants to come back. Wants a shot at goal. Gives it off to Nash. And really the handball wasn't Ooh, good enough. Free and a free kick. kick. Malcolm, I don't know about you, but with, with the three umpires on the ground, particularly on those boundary throw-ins, I can't work out why one umpire wouldn't position himself to actually see the contest from the front. Couldn't agree more, Neil. Uh, they get behind and they miss so much and they're guessing half the time. Yes, I think that uh, the, the, the umpire in the back half could actually move to the centre. He could certainly see any infringements. Yep, yep, I agree. Nevertheless, Mark Mirinda. He's kicked 16 goals this year. He's been good, so he's averaged nearly one a game. And Mirinda kicks. Oh, the crowd's happy behind the goal. 
He's got it, and Richmond get another one. Very valuable goal scored by the wingman. And of course, nowadays, uh, playing on the wing, they're expected to be goal scorers. I think Peter Matera, we've seen over the last uh, five or six years, has really made that his own. And now, of course, there's a lot of other players are doing exactly the same thing. They're covering more ground, and they're very, very fit. And the quick knock. Down on the ground, Campbell almost taken out of the way. Trying to uh, whip through as Rogers at falls to the deck. Couldn't get away. And Richmond, let's check the score for you at 4-2, 26 to Hawthorne, 3-1, 19. 26 minutes gone on the first term. Umpire decides to throw it up. Salmon, front reach, gets it down to his right-hand side of the pack. Harford will try and get it out. Almost got it out, but just thwarted in his attempts at the moment. Then finally, Platten gets it. Gets it to Trelevin. Trelevin with a left footer in towards the half-forward line. As the umpire paying three kicks, now allowing the play to go. Good idea. And a quick handball out again. Holland gets it away. Collins dispossessed as it falls to ground. Woods is there. He couldn't get a definite handball. The pressure is right on here as they dive in. It's almost beach volleyball if we only had a bit of sand that was so uh, tight there. Justin Charles knocked out of the way. Broderick over to Bond. Bond's been busy. Very busy. Gets it in towards the half forward line. Up they go. Falls to ground. Langford again gets the kick away. Overruns it. The pressure is tremendous here. Tellus goes in. Oh, Salmon. Well done. Falls with a quick knock away and Woods, here's another busy play, you can't uh, knock the endeavour of the on-ballers, they've really been working hard as Platten accepts the handball, drives towards centre-half forward, Dunstall leaning back, Gaspar is in there, crowd calling for the free kick, even Dunstall turned around and had a look at the umpire and he doesn't usually uh, upset it as we find Condon severing the ball now from half-back and getting it over to little Johnny Platten in the centre. Platten kicks out wide, oh, set up, beautiful lead. Oh. Played, not oh. played to Hudson, that's pretty tough. Sets up Collins with a handball to Condon and goes for goal and has got the fourth one for the Hawks. Well, I don't like to uh, be too critical of the umpiring, but gee whiz, if Dunster wasn't pulled off that ball then, Malcolm, I'm, I'm uh, my eyes, something on my eyes. Uh, it was a definite free kick to be paid. I don't know if it's Dunster or Hudson. Oh, here, Hudson, here it is Hudson. here here it is oh, that's that's being pulled off the ball well in fact Neil I'd almost pay the mark because yeah. he actually had, he stopped it and controlled it down then got pulled off it it hasn't hurt Hawthorne because they did recover yeah. and, and got the goal so there's no penalty as far as Hawthorne's concerned but it's a bit of a worry uh, when you don't see those type of infringements paid or the mark paid Back to a point, the difference, 4-2 to 4-1 in Tigers favour as we get down to the 27 and a half minute mark. Bursting from the centre, Campbell, a long left-handed handball. Not a good one though to Nash because the taller Langford was there. Broderick, quick hands over towards Michael Gale. A floating left foot punt, hard and there awkward is. to mark, but straight in front. And I said hard to mark, but it didn't have to. He had his big body in front, Neil. Well, two features here. I think that's about the third or fourth occasion that Campbell has, has uh, cleared the ball from the centre bounce. And as we said earlier, if the ball is continually pumped into Richard in this manner, he will get his share and uh, he's going to kick some goals. Already got one so far today. Comes in, 15 metres out, drives straight for goal. There's another one to the Tigers. 5-2 on the board, 32 to 4, 125. Well, perhaps the pressure may be on Ken Judge now to make, uh, and of course he has the, I guess you'd call it the ideal change, Langford for Graham. But there is a lot of pressure being placed on the coaches here to make uh, maybe game-saving moves. We hear the, the match-winning moves, Malcolm, but as you know, <laughs> in, the old, in the coaching days, there are some game-saving moves to be made from a coach's point of view as well. Back in the centre. Seven-point margin to the Tigers. Campbell again. Gets it out, has support from Daffy this time towards the danger man in Richardson. Graham can't get hold of it, recovers well, kicks the ball back and attacking the ball was Daffy and finds up back with him. Terrific stuff. Harford got up from that heavy knock, which was good, and the ball forced over the line. Gee, I just love these, these physical contests, Malcolm. To win a ball out here today, particularly in a, in a tough situation, the player has to show 100% commitment. Boundary thrown right by the Tigers' goal. Gale and Langford. 
Langford does well. Gets it down to Tellus. Just throws it on the boot. Campbell almost. Bond. Support from behind with Daffy. Now goes to the top of the square. Wanted flyers. And there are plenty of them. Over the back to Gale. Three. But there's a free kick, a push. And going to Mark Graham. Oh. And goes out wide. Plenty of play, plenty of stuff going oh. off the ball. Is there ever? Tell us. Has a player in Kepler forward of him. Puts it in that player's path. Running hard at it. Good stuff from all players as Matthew Knights meets him. And the ball spills over. That's a player. Has Kepler had a possession yet? No. Kepler's been down for Hawthorne. He, uh, he's a boy that has to look at his performance and start to find some footy. Boundary umpire bringing it back in. Neil might tell us about some of the action behind the play that happened just a few seconds ago too as it goes into open territory. Platten tries to dive. Knights is almost brought down. Could have been a free kick but the umpire allowing play to go. Holland will try and get it out for Hawthorne. Does do so. Caught there with the ball. Woods. A long handball. Looked like Callaway getting into open territory. A little nasal dive on the ball and send it out wide. Doesn't give much of a chance to his half forward and Daffy knocked away there by Pritchard in the open territory to Tellus. Tellus with a little left footer up to Holland who's covering a lot of territory and has taken the mark. This is Nick Holland for Hawthorne. Goes for the kick. Going half forward, Southern Grandstand side. Flyers up for the ball. Hudson came over the top, couldn't get it. Handball gets it over to Broderick and he finds Charles as the siren sounds for quarter time at Optus Oval with Richmond 5-2, 32, Hawthorne 4-1, 25. Start of the second quarter, Richmond leading Hawthorne by seven points in a tough and entertaining affair. Kick taken out of the centre there by Charles and in front reading it very well was Mark Graham for Hawthorne. Defensively, back to Langford, running off half back beautifully, kicks and Bullis gets rid of Holland, which is no mean feat. So the big fella gives it off to Michael Gale. Now has his brother in a bit of space. The kick only has to be good, and it is. Bullis is a, a very important player to Richardson. They've missed him early in the year. Here goes Richardson with a big leap from behind. Can't get hold of it. Platten runs with Bond off the ground and into the post. That centre um, free kick then was a strange one. One of the Hawthorne boys must have been chatting the umpire there was no infringement for any other reason Jenky about to bring the ball back into play looking for the options Richmond working the, the zone little pal down there with arms outstretched as Jenky comes out to center half back oh oh what a shock a straighten the arms of young Ben uh, Holland that is a poor one and Ben Holland goes out wide. Platten will try and intercept. Did a good job. Got the right hand on it and quickly backs up and gets it around towards the wing version. Southern stand side. All Tigers over here too. Broderick will pick it up. Knights is in there to help out. Gets the handball back to Knights. Two left footers combined. Goes in the half forward. And here comes the long lead and the big mark by Richardson. Exciting player to watch. It's a terrible kick. It's a real wonky one. It didn't even start to spin one way or the other. Falls to ground. Tellus again, getting a fair few kicks, probably sixth for the day. Comes out towards the half-back line. Miranda is in there, and the ball over the line and out of bounds. Repeating the scoreboard, Richmond 5-3-33. Hawthorne 4-1-25. Boundary throw in between wing and half forward. Just looking around for Ruckman. No one there, so Gale and Condon have to do it. They bring it down in front of the pack. Bond is caught. Balls to Broderick. Creative player is Paul Broderick. Hooks the ball back into the front of the square. And Gale, too big for Langford. Once again, Malcolm, we saw... But if I have it on replay, you'll, the viewers will see the lovely little check, just a little bit of check body work by Gale to, to halt Langford's... But there it is. To hold his movement and gave him clear airspace. Yeah, Broderick... Brick. Broderick's kick was great, wasn't it? Put Beautiful. it his side. Well, Put it Broderick, his teammate's side. Yes, gave him, uh, gave him the, the, the percentage value. You got Broderick and uh, Knights, uh, both beautiful deliverers of the ball. So Brendan Giles kicked the one goal in the first quarter and a chance to get the first goal of this second quarter and push that margin out to 14 points for the Tigers. Kicks deliberately and he's kicked it. So they do lead by 14 points. Well, you'd have to say the, the move of playing Brenton Gale out, away from centre-half forward out of the pocket, allowing both he and Rissen 
a big area to move into has paid off already. There's a, there's a, they're only playing versus the, the two, the two forwards up in the square or in the in the goal, 50 meter zone, and there's a lot of room for those forwards to move into. There's the bounce once again, 6-3-39 Tigers, 4-1-25, probably the biggest margin of the game as Broderick delivers into half forward, a good tap on by Matthew Richardson, over to half forward, almost hanging on there, the umpire allowed play to go on, now he's blowing the whistle now, and he's gone the other way, I thought, I must admit, Neil, I thought it was going to be a Richmond free kick beforehand, and Pritchard yeah. will take it out to the other side for Condon to grab the ball, handball's over the top, this is Graham, the running player, coming down, oh, it's a slippery deck, he spilled it, Finally recovers, drives to half forward. That's Nick Holland in front, punched away down to Matthews. And another handful of Gail to Miranda. Miranda looking for someone up further afield. And little Powell is there, spills the mark, turns around. Got into the action a fair bit last week too against Eston, but uh, didn't get a lot of stats. Handball back Powell, back him up this time to his fellow roving type in Nash. Handball along the ground with a flying kick in towards the full forward line. And Graham tries to knock it away, but Richardson is again there. And he'll play on now. He gets the call and spins around and puts it through for another one for the Tigers. It's uh, the Richmond smaller players are starting to hurt the Hawthorne team with their movement. They're, they seem to be getting the player up to the contest and to receive the, the hands, the, the ball off the hands a lot better than, Rich, uh, than Hawthorne are at this stage. And, if that continues to happen, of course, Gale and Richardson are going to see a lot of the ball. And we saw Richardson there with his class, uh, which is all class, take another mark in, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And as we said earlier, he's going to get a lot of those balls. Well, the four forwards, both Dunstall and Richardson with three goals apiece, and Richmond lead by 20 points. Stolen out of the centre. First one the Hawks have actually got out of the centre for some time. And Hargraves takes a very good mark low down. Wants to play on quickly, does, and has players out wide. And this is to 11. That comment of yours, Malcolm, was good because Salmon has been getting his hand on a lot of the centre balls, but it's been Richmond has been taking them out. And I think that they're reading Salmon's knock very well. So to 11's played all the games this year and has hooked that to the left. So one that the Hawks really needed just to stop that flow from the Tigers. Uh, they move on to 4-2. Richmond 7-3, so the margin back to 19 points. Gasper, the pressure's gone off him in the last couple of minutes. It's all down on Graham, isn't it? It's amazing how things fluctuate. Gasper decides for the southern grandstand side, high in the air. Neil? Yes, Mike, I just see the pattern of Richmond's hit out now. They're all congregate in the centre, then they all move to one side and get the numbers. Now Miranda picks up and drives to half forward. Half a dropping back is met. Down on the ground, Daffy. Daffy in the full forward. Here's another one for the Tigers. They're really burning them up. Just coming back to that kickoff, and we'll get to the goal later. Just coming that the Richmond boys are congregating in the centre. Then they all charge to one side. The kick is delivered there. They have the numbers against Hawthorne, as we saw then. The tremendous contest here, and of course, the read off, uh, the read off here by Daffy is an absolute beauty. Good contest. Beautiful pickup by Daffy as a half forward flanker should do, and of course he finished his work with a very valuable goal. So the margin back to 25 points. Richmond in front as Salmon and Charles go at it. Not forward by Charles Campbell as he so often done runs onto it. Fantastic tackle from Woods from behind. This is on. This is pretty tough. This game. The Tigers trying to exert their influence on the game now. Hawthorne, kick out of the air. Giles picks it up. Gives it out with a very dangerous Nick Daffy. Caught from behind, pressurised. Great shepherd from Bond. Daffy onto his left foot. Goes towards goal. Richardson over the back. And Hartford in space. Runs in the goal square. Has Salmon. And so Salmon can relieve. Goes out wide to Crawford. Knight's with him. Crawford, lovely grab in front. Now looks at his options towards half forward. It's a very high kick. Two big fellas come. Kellaway gets in front and will be paid the mark or free kick. Stood his ground as Bullis and Holland came at him. I think they, they came to play here, Richmond, today. 
They are super determined. Looks as though Langford might be back on Richardson now. Callaway from half back. It'll make it up towards the centre wing and well up the ground was uh, Richardson, but Salmon handballs it off. Gets it over to Pritchard. A little short pass from Pritchard in the centre. Trelevin looking for someone. And he'll got Hudson on the lead and also coming up was Dunstall. Hudson will get the ball, handballs it off to Dunstall. Dunstall back towards Kapler. This will be his first kick for the day if he gets rid of it. Oh. And it's a shocking pass. Put his teammate under all sorts of trouble to 11. But Condon picks up the crumbs, handballs to Dunstall. A great smother by Michael Gale. And they are committed, the Tigers. It falls to ground and a knuckle on the ground. In fact, away from his teammate. Dunstall got it, as you can see. And now taken over the line and out of bounds. But aren't they committed? They're applying tremendous body pressure on the Hawthorne boys. They just they just can't get clear. Oh, this boundary throwing. All important. Hawks needing a goal. Bond puts a hand in. Holland scoops it back through his legs towards Platten. The two, Malcolm, two players for Hawthorne that must start getting into the game more as one is Platten and the other is Kapler. At least they've been very quiet on the stats thus far. Certainly Kapler. Boundary throwing. Rogers. Knights is there to help. Oh, it's almost oh. throws it away. Sets up David Burke. And very direct goes forward. The kick doesn't hit right. And Harford picks up a wobbly ball and goes out to Kepler. Should have really marked that. Had two hands on it. Pressure was only fair. Marinda caught holding on. And will take the free kick. They are marks, Malcolm. It must be taken in a game like this if your team hopes to win the football match. Miranda goes into guard. What a great kick. Off the pal. Oh, Richardson's got a paddock to work in. Certain. Plays on and kicks his fourth. Well, once again, great teamwork by Richmond. The kick to uh, Brett and Gale was spot on. The give. The confidence is starting to come now. And I can't work out why Langford was so far away from Richardson. He, um, he, you know, he spotted him about 10 or 12 metres. And, of course, you know, I felt like Richardson, you're dead. Look at the gap here between the bodies. Beautiful take. He would be a nightmare to stand, Rich. You don't know what he's going to do. One minute points the difference. The next minute is blown right out in the scoreboard. Almost double at the moment. Quick knock away and Condon oh. trying to open up the area, but it's all Tigers. There's a whole pack of them as Daffy brought to ground but gets his ball in, uh, booting the ball into centre half forward. And Brendan Gale, 48 metres out, has taken the ground. They're all just lifting, aren't they? Hawthorne can't control these two big men up forward, Gale and Ritson. And they've kicked the last five goals, the Tigers. 9 3 to 4 2 before he kicks. Well within his range. Very little breeze out here at Optus Oval this afternoon. Flags are dormant. And the way they're riding a high, he could just about do this. Oh. But he's uh, got the diff distance, but not the line. It's out to the right-hand side, and the goal umpire signifies that one finger. Richmond, 9-4-58, Hawthorne, 4-2-26. One of the beauties of watching a game when, when you're not particularly interested in who wins or loses is the fact that you can see the momentum. And the momentum is really building up uh, Richmond's way now. Kick in from Jinky goes long. Picked out Broderick, belts it back forward. Woods under pressure. Manages to get a kick. Goes very high towards uh, the centre of the ground. Graham are playing up forward. Has Crawford in space. Kepler, the handball comes towards him. It just won't sit. Goes off the ground. Dunstall and Gasper work very hard. Kepler does something very good and drags the ball back in. And early in the season, that would have been holding the ball. Not now. No, they've, they've relaxed on that a little bit. And I think so they should. The player's got the courage to go and, and sort of get possession down low. Give, give him a little bit of encouragement. Holland and Bullis. Bullis goes towards the boundary line. Hudson wants to find some room. Can't. Goes very high. Players come at it. Dunstall! Oh, oh, good take. Oh. Has he hurt himself? Could have hurt himself, I think. Fell awkwardly. By his own admission, Jason Dunstall is not one of the competition's great high flyers. But that was a very well-judged mark and certainly was off the ground. Now, it's his back that has been giving him problems over the last couple of weeks. He may have... He certainly twinged something. And the way he's walking, I'd say it is 
maybe just wind. Even when it was coming down to the forward line, you could see the captain, as Jason, trying to do something out there, really boring in. And I think that was the, the effort for, uh, as Mel said, not the high-flying type Jason Dunstall of, of usual, but he really put everything into that because they badly need something, and he was after it. Well, he's certainly not letting his team down. He's lining up for his fourth. Yes, and after Richmond have kicked the last five, he, it's almost a vital kick this to stop that Richmond momentum. He kicks and has kicked his fourth. A great goal from Dunstall. Actually, when you look at Dunstall's form early in the season, Malcolm, there was a lot of people saying, you know, he's, he's sort of struggling a bit and maybe over the top and on the way down, but his last uh, five, six matches have been super, and he really is leading the way for his Hawthorne uh, team out there. He's, he's a tremendous player, great record, and uh, he just gives it 100%. Once again, the bounce in the centre. Salmon gets the knock. Can they get it out of the centre? Crawford will pick up the crumbs. Off to Kaplan. Great smother. Another de desperate effort by Trelevin in the half forward. Ball knocked away from Platten. Hawthorne fans say, what about a free? Umpire letting it go. I'd go along with that. Miranda and the defensive 50 handballs over the top. They're just creating so much space at the moment. The Tigers and getting the numbers to the ball. Miranda almost waited too long into half forward. Daffy knocked off the ball, but he's still coming back for more. Crawford handballs. This will be Jason Taylor now on the ground. Sends it out wide to the northern grandstand side. Hudson coming up, looking for the free kick and gets it. Played for the free kick, got it. Now the advantage paid. Woods coming within 55. It's a wonky kick, hard to mark for both players. It's just screwed off angle. Hargraves in, ducks the head. Umpire allowed play to go on Ooh. again. This time he's ducked the head. Ooh. They didn't see that one. It was on the blind Ooh. side of the umpire. I would say that was the reason, though, the deal wasn't given. I think the umpire was blocked in his view. Yes, he was a little unlucky, the Hawthorne boy there. I thought there was maybe a free kick uh, could have been awarded. But full marks to Richmond. They are really playing physical, hard footy. Umpire throws it up 40 metres out, or 35 and a half anyway as Condon has the chance to do something, almost to throw backwards to Hargraves, who handballs to Platten. This is basketball stuff that they're not getting in the right area to get a kick in. They were trying to set it up to give someone a spare shot, but the pressure must be intense out there, Neil, the way they're fumbling like that. It certainly is, and uh, Richmond are just denying Hawthorne uh, a clear leg and free movement. Interestingly, Richmond led Essendon by 26 points at half-time as the tap comes down the woods, kick smothered, and eventually got run over. Goes back to Holland on his left foot, and he's kicked a miracle goal. Fantastic goal from Nick Holland. Yes, we described that, Malcolm, uh, for a big man to hook it back on his non-preferred leg, which was his left leg on that occasion, was a great goal, and that may be the, uh, the last two goals just may pick Hawthorne up a little bit. And the thing I was about to say, Neil, before Nick Holland kicked it, the margin at the moment was 26 points. Back That's to 20 now. Yes, and... The momentum swung a little bit, but Richmond, to me, are still the team that are making that are making the football match move their way. 9-4 to 6-2, 58 to 38, as Mel mentioned, the 20-point margin. It'll kick into half forward. Miranda picking up plenty of kicks out here at the moment for the uh, Tigers. Ten kicks, two marks, two handballs. Wing position. And young Powell comes in again. Third game for the Tigers, up to the full forward or half forward line, punched away, away from Richardson. Almost a hole down there. Hawthorne fans screaming that time. The handball to Katma. Probably been given a G up to say, get into the game if you can. But the kick has uh, been grabbed down here by David Burke. One of the uh, three father sons in the Tigers side. Recruited under that. Matthews out the half back to Callaway. That's too high. Bad tackle. That's a bad tackle that, for that boy. He, because all he had to do was apply the tackle correctly. And Hawthorne were away. Handball's off to Knights. Knights looking, then kicking, but it's not a good one. Matthew Knights, we don't expect to see kicks like that after you've had a good look and a bit of open space as Jason Taylor takes it. Goes further down the Southern Grandstand side and Trelevin with the ball. He's had plenty of time to look. Let's see if he can do something with it. It's to the man, all right. Hudson just failed to take it under pressure over the line out of bounds. Mark could have been taken by Hudson there. I know he had pressure on him, but he had full chest at the ball. Margin 20 points, Richmond in front. Just under eight and a half minutes to go this second quarter. Charles tapped towards Miranda, then falls back to Charles. Handball's off to Knights. 
Knights this time kicking forward. Better kick. No, it's not. Harvard reads it in front of Broderick. Now switches play to Langford. The kick needs to sit up here. Richardson coming at him. He's caught. Langford holding the footy. Certainly. And Richardson just charges back to the goal. So we've got Powell who will kick long. And really a one-on-one -on -one here, Harford and Richardson, and you'd reckon Richardson should win this. The kid does well. Yes. Harford, terrific stuff. Well, and a pat on the head from his teammate. It should be a pat on the head from Langford because Langford made the error and didn't force himself back onto his, on his immediate opponent. And the young kid Harford to go back and do his job for him. Tremendous save there for Hawthorne. Big save. Be giving away a fair few uh, centimetres there, Harford to. Uh, Richardson, Jenky, and we've found an infringement getting too close on the uh, kick out. I've been noticing in recent weeks a lot of the full forwards are getting closer and closer when the fullbacks are kicking out almost down to seven metres at times. Yes, yeah. we did it on Talking Footy with Roger Merity. He actually uh, caused some havoc, so it's good to see one picked up because it is illegal. It's, uh, yes, against the rules. Jenky gets this bonus extra kick. To the edge of the Good square, mark. and will the umpire pay it or not? Yes, he is going to pay it. Strong mark by the small Rogers there in front of the pack. Gets the lead, Melendez on his own, but he decides to ignore that to go straight down the centre because no one was on the mark. Richardson high, but knocked away by Langford as it went over his head. Campbell gets the boot to ball. Into the forward pocket, and here's that man we were talking about a few seconds ago, Harvin. Had a good year, Harvin. Goes to half back, southern side, and Hargraves making the most of his return to the senior side, takes the mark. Little left footer, further down, that's not oh. good. Great interception by Nace for the left hand. But Chris Nace, showing all his skills, goes into the centre of the ground, and Powell. This boy's hurting him a bit, Powell, he's finding some football. Yeah, he's starting to make himself available, yeah. Neil. Yep. Here's a long kick. Richardson will have last crack at this, and then falls through the pack. Broderick was in front, caught. Oh, it gives it off to Bond. Oh. Bond has Miranda clear. Here he goes, turns around, certain goal for the Tigers. Off the post. <laughs> well, Malcolm, I don't like to correct you, but there's never seen any such thing as a certainty. <laughs> it's amazing. It, it looked a certain goal, but he just overplayed a little bit. Found beautiful space. <laughs> well, there you are. And now the coach is going to be upset because he didn't handball to Richardson <laughs> coming down past him. He turned around to have the uh, shot across his body. Big kick from Jenky right out towards the centre square. Made it too. Jason Taylor tries to pick it up, couldn't do so in the back. Everything going the Tigers' way at the moment because they're first to the ball and they've got the uh, momentum up. David Burke goes back. Just can't afford to give away those free kicks. Little short kick. Here's Powell again, as Malcolm said, making himself available, getting in. He was with the Collingwood Reserves. Don't know why they didn't keep him, but he's right in the action now with a kick down there, although Paul Salmon, a very good grab. Is that only his second mark, I believe? Two, his third. Yes, he's been a bit quiet this quarter. Getting the ball off to Crawford. He's taking the bounce right out to the 50-metre line now. Drives right down towards half four, but where's the Tigers and the Hawks to back him up? Falls to ground with Michael Gale. Spins around with a left-handed hand pass. Comes out to the wing. Rogers with a kick in towards half forward. I'll find it down there with Benny Gale having a good day. They've really lifted some of these Tigers. In towards the centre half forward. And here he is again, Powell. Having a wonderful day. Originally from Heidelberg. Well, I don't know. Uh, I guess uh, 14. I guess it's uh, Brenton Crummel's man. I don't know about that. But gee whiz, this boy is coming forward. Offering himself. And the Richmond players further afield are finding him. He's doing a very good job. Robert Powell wearing uh, number 13, lucky for some, as they say in bingo. We'll see what his kicking's like. Gee, he's gone back a long way. Almost a test ball to run in. He's got a fraction underneath it. Gets plenty of distance, though, to the goal square. Ooh, Hawks nearly upset themselves. Salmon came in, but it's going to be picked up by the crumbs going to Crawford out to half back, and Jenkins got the ball. This is where they're having their problem. They're coming out of defence OK, but they can't get through the centre area. Midfield's holding him up. Yes, it ends up with Platten. Now he's got to run through. That's what they needed, some legs through. The kick wobbles, though. Game. Bond, good crap. Wants to set it up to Charles. Felt a teammate. Was under enormous pressure. That's Powell and Platten in after him. What they actually do is actually move a lot of players back, Hawthorne. Neil, yes. And just not a lot of players across that centre line for the rebound. And I guess they're just trying to hold this game up for a while. Well, they're going to try and win it, I think. Sure. Collins, caught. 
this is where the Richmond uh, halfback and midfielders are picking them off. They're, they're, they've got two on one in most situations, and of course, two on one normally wins. Salmon and Charles. Salmon push forward with the football and taps it out the back. Nacious first there, gives it to Daffy, kicks it quickly forward over Holland's head. Langford reads it beautifully. Richardson doesn't bother to chase, and then Langford goes to the line. Uh, back himself there, Langford, which uh, shows a bit of courage to leave a very dangerous player like Richardson, but he's such an experienced uh, campaigner, Langford, he knows when to go. Yeah, some movement from the full forward would have been nice, though, Neil, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would have been. Just a token, at least. Boundary throw in. Crawford heads towards the line. Bond's got a bit of time, spins the ball back around his body. Oh, get out of the air. Super stuff from Jenke. <laughs> being held and threw a boot at the ball. And <laughs> Good fortune, that one. It's amazing, isn't it? Skill. Fantastic skill. Eye hand coordination. Yeah. And he didn't need hands. <laughs> Taylor grabs it out of the air court and a ball up. I think these uh, last few minutes are very, very important here. Hawthorne must, in my opinion, score a goal to be in this match. Yeah, the umpires have been reasonable to Rogers, to Bond, oh. kicks it back behind Richardson. That's a poor kick, Langford will mark it. And then just plays on because Richardson really hasn't got much defensive part to his game. And that's pretty critical, but it's true. Off to uh, Kepler, kicks the ball into centre half forward area. Good bounce for Kellaway, caught by Stevenson on the ground. Here's Trelevin, one on one, Dunstall, now two come at him. Here the ball is. falls. Surely will sit up for Hargraves, it won't. Awkward bounce there, Gasper desperate. Knocks the ball towards the line. To Levin's court, Dunstall gets the handball off to Hargraves. Screws the ball around too, too far and across the face and out on the full. That was the play they needed. They, uh, they had to score a goal in that passage. Yes, they've had it down, but they just can't get it anywhere. And they really have tightened up. Nowhere to kick, though. He has to kick to a contest here. Coming out. Right out towards Charles and Salmon. Salmon gets hand the ball, goes to the boundary line, and Charles has a, a thump at it, but it goes over. Charles has done a good job on Salmon. He's uh, he's kept him well, he's kept him under control this quarter. A bit harsh on Richardson, I was. I mean, no, just, I think you I think you were spot on. A he full forward has dead. to chase. Yeah. He must chase, and he has the pace to chase. A little bit of fiddling behind the packs. But finally, the ball comes in. Rogers tries dented in his enthusiasm. Charles tries to get it forward. Burke picks up. Great tackle. Well done. And Salmon may have hurt he himself his down there because he, he got the knee when he yes. came into a tackle. But he's also got the football, so he will get up. <laughs> it's amazing what that football does to people. It just... It just I think there's a tremendous amount of blood there, though. He's in a bit of trouble, Paul Salmon. Yeah, I think he clipped his... Uh, as he tackled and fell forward, he clipped his knee, I feel. Yeah, there's a little bit of blood there. That's a bit of a dent for the uh, the Hawks. Always a bit wobbly on the legs, too, when he was going up there. Fortunately, it's very close to uh, half-time, so they'll be able to patch him up. And uh, Looks like uh, just a nick above the eye there, yeah, Neil. Yeah, I think he'll be OK with the half-time break. And he gets a fresh player on the ground. 9-6 to 6-2. 26 coming up to 27 minutes gone as Hargraves takes that kick that was awarded to Salmon. Locked to ground, Stevenson a little punt off the uh, punt, but it doesn't go far enough. Gasper took it and went to play on straight away. Dunstall got it out, as you can see. Got it over towards Trelevin with a left footer, but they are astray and they're lacking a bit of confidence up there also now, Neil. The pressure's been so great. But they are back in the game, Ian. It looked as though it was going to uh, disappear from them halfway through this quarter. They have fought back. Now, this could be crucial. Nick Holland often passes the ball out the back or to the side of the running rover when he's in there, but he didn't have a chance that time. It came nowhere near him. Picked up on a flying kick in towards goal, and Trelevin has put it there for another behind. So two quick shots, but again, no result. Now let's see if Richmond uh, do this move. It may be hard for the viewers to uh, to view this, but we'll just see if they, like they do their normal pattern when the ball finally gets back to the fullback. They congregate in the centre. They have a couple of outriders out. But then they congregate in the centre and they all move to one side, yes. which gives them numbers against the Hawthorne players. Yes, it works well, that, Neil, if you get the footy. If it doesn't, you, you're a lot... Like, you're, le you're left man open. Yeah, very exposed at the, yep. at the back. It has been tried before, of course, by a lot of coaches. 
We'll just see if they, they try it again here. Campbell, of course, being such a good kicker. No, different pattern. Still wants to go the long option, which is the big fella, Charles. The ball comes to ground. Robbed away from the players. Kellaway tries to tap it towards Marinda. Does it very cleverly. Platten right on the boundary line, working hard and in over the top of it. And eventually the ball spills out. The problem that Hawthorne have um, is they only have the effective one, one effective forward at this stage. That's Dunstall. The other players are finding it very hard to find the football. So Holland and Gale. Just under two minutes to go. Richmond by 21 points. Ball kicked away from the pack. Nice. Daffy quick. And really just controlled that kick off the ground as it bobbled up in front of him and gained a valuable 30 metres for his team. I think the football went where it was intended there. He, uh, he just wanted a breather. Showed a lot of pace there, Daffy, too. And 21 points, minute and a half now. Second quarter. Been a good quarter by the Tigers. Hawthorne still in touch. They haven't nailed him yet. Quick kick comes out of the pack. Platten, a couple of players overrun it there. Woods caught, stands up in the tackle, and then dump. Gee, I can't remember the last time Johnny Platten fumbled a ball. I, I thought he would have taken that one away. He's got the gloves on too now. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, do they help? <laughs> oh, I suppose you try anything, don't you? Yep. Woods, I don't like him personally. To 11, great handball to Pritchard. He is the finisher to Dunstall. Has been for his whole career, oh. and no exception, Jeez, because Dunstall made it a super mark. I don't think you can say any more than that. Uh, that was a great a great kick, first of all, by Pritchard. But then for Dunstall to, A, maintain the pace to stay just ahead of Gasper, and then the strong hands to, to take the ball against the uh, well, against the intended spoil. Fantastic effort. So Jason Dunstall with four. And he really is into heady numbers now, isn't he? 1,143 goals. Can't think that far. <laughs> Jason Dunstall, kicks, hit it all right, just drifting yes. off to the right, no, no it's got no. there, no. got his fifth, and Hawthorne seventh. They needed that one. That's the one they needed Malcolm to stay at their back. For some reason it's amazing when you watch football matches how a team suddenly for some reason takes the pressure off and allows the other team back in. Richmond have done this here now and uh, They'll have to regroup because they'll be thinking about last week where they had that big fade out against Essendon and the Hawthorne are, are challenging. 15 points the difference, 31 minutes gone and Tigers won another one before half-time. Campbell, left footer, in towards the full forward line. Charles looking for the free kick and has got it. Yep. He was being snagged, snagged, there's no doubt about it. And, and Richardson has run on and kicked the goal. Amazingly, Richardson's got his fifth they had 18 seconds to do that. They did it in 15 from the centre. And Matthew Richardson, with three goals this quarter, pushes that margin back out to 21 points in what was an exciting piece of play. As you see that nearly ran on, the umpire's called play on, so the goals resulted. And uh, once again, of course, with no salmon in the centre, Holland couldn't reach Charles, and Campbell took the ball clear. It was dangerous, uh, dangerous last minute for both sides. Look, three seconds. I've only seen the best goal I've seen kicked in five. So there it is. Holland gets that tap, and there is half time. In what has been an entertaining quarter, and in fact half of football, Richmond that quarter have added five goals, and Hawthorne three. Start of the third quarter at Optus Oval, round 17. Richmond versus Hawthorne. And Richmond lead by 21 points in what has been an entertaining game so far. Salmon over the top, knocks the ball down, falls at the back to Trelevin, quickly throws the ball forward, kicks it forward. Burke bounces away. Some of the bouncing hasn't come back to the players. It's a bit damp in spots. And a brilliant kick out to Bond on the wing. Bond looks in towards his big fellas. Salmon, Richardson with the last jump at him. And Salmon stands his ground very well. Richardson wants to claim the mark, but the man in front will be paid. Paul Salmon, a bandage Paul Salmon. Very important, Malcolm, his recovery, I think, for the Hawks. Yes, he copped the knock uh, just late in that second quarter, and a nick above the eye, bought blood, and went off the ground. Taylor, clear. To Harford, squares the ball out wide. Really unproductive play. Puts Trelevin 
and enormous pressure. Broderick does well. Off to Charles. Knights to Gale. And then the handball comes back to the running Knights. Knights with a kick. Salmon just gets a hand in. Richardson, after the footy now, has a bit of time. Now screws the ball back out very high. And in fact, poorly and out on the full. Once again, we, we saw Hawthorne going, trying to get through midfield with some movement. And uh, once again, they lost the football. That's been their problem all day, trying to come out of defence through that midfield area. I don't know whether it was, uh, well, whether it was touched or what. But, uh, was out of bounds on the full. And there's the little flip down on the ground with Naish turning around, squares it up to the front of the square. Richardson has the box seat. Good knock away by Langford. Gets it out in the open territory to allow Crawford to get away with the handball. Not great to tell us. Further handball, though, it's a bit sloppy. Gets it over the top to Crummel, but putting him under more pressure than anything. Now they've got space. Crawford drives, but man in front leading for the ball is Gasper. Went for it confidently. And he's standing it up for it pretty well. Knee, for knee, down. Dunstall. Dunstall, down. Knee, knee. Got the knee on the back. No, he, and Dunstall's done his knee badly here. Mm. He's got a real problem. Short pass over towards half-back to Bullis. Dunstall still in the hands of the trainers. He'll keep an eye on that as the ball sent it off towards Charles. And they're still around the skipper. He's been the one man on the forward line for them too, Neil. I hate to say in. this, Ian, but uh, I think that's a bad one. Charles. Oh, big fly by Richardson, as you saw. Collins with the crumbs. Out the halfback, just past the 50-metre line. Dunstall still down. It'll be absolute tragedy uh, for the Hawthorne champion, but he... he when he hit the ground, his first move with his hand was to feel his knee. You'll feel it. You'll see it here. There it is, the jar, the extended movement, as Gerard Healy will say. And, uh, well, let's hope he recovers. Salmon with the tap, just diving in on top. And Miranda pinned. He's and, coming off. And they're walking off at the moment. But they were testing the knee, as you could see. Salmon. Flips it back, couldn't quite get it clear. Three Tigers there, virtue to one Hawk. Little Powell square it up beautifully. Oh, bounces off the chest of Rogers. It was meant for the leading Richardson coming up the ground as Collins takes it away. Over the back to Pritchard. He delivers out of defence up towards the wing. Good mark to Daffy. G marks uh, well and he, he works hard. Into half forward, leading up in front. Crawford with the ball and will be paid the mark. We have to say that that uh, Dunstall leaving the ground is a huge bonus for Richmond. He was the one forward up Hawthorne's area that was keeping them in the game. The pass is out towards Langford on the outer side. Another short pass further up the ground to Jason Taylor. He's gone long. Who's down there on the forward line? Nick Holland, almost. Not quite, says the umpire. Bullet oh, spinned. Boy. Crowd cries for the free kick. Tucked in underneath. That was a bad miss by the umpire. That was clear holding the ball against that Richmond boy. Drop, just dropped the ball. Falling to ground. Becomes more painful each time you watch. And just uh, the simple movement. Now, oh, someone raised the uh, elbow there. Trelevin gets dragged away from the footy. Campbell is in there. They're waiting for it to come out. And Charles accepts it when it does come out. A torpedo from the standing kick in towards Richardson, almost had finger to the ball, almost captured the ball. Keeps it going, <laughs> the athletic Richardson. He may not be able to chase from coming out of defence, but by gee, he can run towards goals with it. Well, you'd have to say that's very, very special, that brand of football reserved for a very few players. The athleticism of Richardson there and the, the continued commitment, here we'll see it on screen again. Have a look at this. He hits on from Langford, hits past again, takes the body or the arm, and gee whiz, that's, that's sheer football talent. Great to watch. Two blows to Hawthorne in the last two minutes. Their skipper Jason Dunstall carried off with a knee injury, and Richardson with a fantastic goal for the Tigers. Daffy not well here either, coming off. Collins caught. Under enormous pressure, Bond looks like an avalanche coming here as it goes to Gale. And really, if that midfield can't get the ball for Hawthorne, these forwards of Richmond will absolutely slaughter you. Yes, Daffy's off with a hand injury. I don't quite know how bad it is. I think that, he got it in around the half-forward line when yes. the little pack was up there just after the uh, Dunstall incident. 
They're fired up today, Richmond. They, they're, they're on a mission. They realise it's their, virtually their last chance to stay in the hunt for the eight. Brendan Gales, kick two. It's been a danger. Kicks it high. Just finding a cross now to the right of the goal square. Tapped out wide. Nash, clever. On the boundary line. Collins puts pressure on. It was good pressure. And the kick is forced over the line. Well, Collins will always do that, uh, Malcolm. He, he's a tremendous competitor back there in that back pocket. Boundary throw in. 15 metres around from the Richmond goal. Salmon in front. Charles from behind. Tap down. Powell. This time looks at the goals. Hooks it round. Snaps. Oh, Langford. Fantastic in front. Strong. And there was pressure too from behind from Richardson. Goes short to Taylor. And the Hawks really, all these two players have to lift now. They really must rise. This is the spot in the eight we're talking about. As Richardson shows more party tricks. Height too much for Pritchard. Goes back inside. Oh, and heaps of space as Powell kicks. Wobbles the ball forward really. And the pack comes. Jinky on the ground. Works hard. Free kick from Campbell and will be paid. Malcolm, that was a better part of Richardson's game there when he, he chased out of the goal square and, and took that mark in the, in the out of defensive area. Collins brings it out to Pritchard and a further handball down the ground. On the left foot, Crummel spins around and Woods cops it across the side, as you saw. A little bit of remonstrating left, right and centre. It's called pressure, that. And Crawford gets uh, there, whips it over towards his teammate Tallis. Tallis in the half forward. Quick pick up. Handball comes out. Crummel goes in, but it's all Tigers. All oh, ricochet off the boot. Platten got the chance to get in, dumped by Campbell. Ball held in at Hawthorne's half forward line, but they would have liked a bit more. Without question, the more you look at this game, the more you see the pressure on the Hawthorne forwards than at the other end that the Hawthorne boys can apply. Graham going up for the uh, knockout. Short a big man at the moment. As the ball comes out, umpires found the free. It's going to go Hawthorne's way. Trelevin will go back and take it. Man on the mark will be 45 out with a chance of scoring Trelevin. Had a useful game, Trelevin. Played all 17 games, six goals so far over the year, so he's not a, uh, a multiple goal kicker for the season. Let's go. It'll be into the square or just wide of the square. Juggle in the mark and fourth through by Gasper. And the Hawks have gone up by another behind. 7 4 46, Richmond 11 6 72. We've played eight and a half minutes into this third term. And of course, with no Dunstall up there now, the uh, Hawthorne forward line would be ap out of all sorts of, of cohesion. Gasper kicks in very long and a very good kick in the end. Pullis stands his ground in front and takes a well judged mark. Richmond players run forward. Now goes direct to Gale. Big fly from Tallis from behind, not completed. The ball falls on the ground. The Richmond players there in abundance. That was Ben Moore on the ground for the first time. It comes back to him. The youngster from Glenelg in South Australia kicks the ball forward. And Langford takes a very good mark again. So that's two out of two in the last two attacks. Yeah, well, Langford, uh, he's played in front in that position for a number of years. And he knows where to, knows where to put his body. Goes short to Collins. Crawford. Wants the longer kick. It's not a bad kick either. Very good kick, actually, in front. And really, probably should have been taken by Mark Graham. Yeah, he just sort of took his eyes off. It. I think it hit him in the forehead. Yeah, the kick really was perfect. Boundary throwing. Almost centre wing. Salmon and Charles at it again. They've been at it all day. Tap. Broderick runs hard at it. And then sets up the running Campbell. The ball won't sit for him. Being pressured. Handballs it away. That's fairly. Pritchard picks it up. Kicks it very high. Salmon has to sit and wait. Gale can't oh, get to the contest. Yeah. He does in the end. So Levin tried to keep him out of it. Broderick starting to pick up kicks. Weeks the ball forward. Players come to meet it. Overrunning it is Powell. In underneath Collins and Holland. And Pritchard there also. Going back uh, a few years, Malcolm, and you would have seen it. Hawthorne were past masters at winning these types of games when it was tough, hard, and, and, and needed a lot of body work. Well, Richmond are out playing in that department today. Indeed, they are at the moment. Tap towards the boundary line. This is Nash. Slips. There's enough time to recover. 
and then wobble it forward. But Collins takes oh. the march. Good play on the umpire. It was touched off the boot. Rogers back to Nash. And the kick goes forward through oh. the hands. Richardson throws it onto his boot and unfortunately is missed. So that's his first blemish for the day. He's kicked 6 1. And Richmond 11 7 73. Hawthorne 7 4 46. Just under 11 minutes remaining of the third quarter. The beauty of Richardson from a team point of view is he's, he's up and running all the time. He's offering himself in, in all sorts of positions, and it'd be a nightmare for a fullback to try and handle. Langford. A low trajectory, one right out to half back was a lovely pass to Stevenson. Stevenson swings to the southern grandstand side. Hawthorne with the numbers over there. If they can do something with it, Trelevin picks it up. Screws it back with the left, but straight into the hands of the Tigers, and Bond snatches the ball away. We're going to have to get a bit of system going, uh, Hawthorne, at the moment. Into half forward, Rogers there, brought to the ground by Trelevin. Gets to his feet. Fairly crowded around about the 50-metre line, but after that, there's a fair few holes down there for the Tigers if they can get it in quickly, and that's what they want for Richardson. Knight's going back, surveying the situation. Richardson heading to the pocket. Now swings it towards that area. Almost goes to Broderick first, falls short. Good pick up by half, and Richardson comes out of the blue and is caught. Yeah, uh, and I suppose that's almost like the tiger in the jungle bringing down the prey. Well, I isn't, that's magnificent when he does that sort of stuff, isn't it? it makes it, him a complete player. Yep, he's well, it's, it's a defensive part of his game. And there's the centering kick by Richardson to centre half four with Benigal. They just and look at Richardson now, the movement. He's like, he's like a raging young, well, tiger out there. He's, he's just demanding the football. But Gail feels as though he can, uh, he can kick this goal. Great chase by Richardson. I don't agree with that decision uh, when you're caught from behind. You should be given some opportunity. But it was still a great defensive chase and, and, and good team lifting football by Richardson. Gail, 17 games, one of those that have played all around. Spenny comes in, 18 goals so far. And the Tiger faithful like it. It's another one. And the game um, is starting to slip away from Hawthorne here a little bit. Not so much on the on the scoreboard. Well, it is there a little as well, but it's in the in the way the game's being played. The Richmond players are just so they're just so much more aggressive, and and their confidence is back, and then they're controlling that half back line. Richmond by 33 points, just under 10 minutes of the third quarter. All kicked out of the air. Callaway goes the fist. Pulls to the Ruckman Charles. Athletical player. Screws the ball back to Holland. Can't get hold of it. Jenky works his way through players to Woods. Chips it. Almost to Gale. Holland quickly off to Platten. Platten runs at goal. Runs hard and kicks it. And dropping back is Gasper. Takes a great defensive mark. Has a player up the middle, it's Rogers. Stevenson will come, but too late. Now goes wide. Kicks that to Richardson. Bit of a gamble by uh, Hawthorne here with uh, Capra at full forward. Matthew Richardson, the leading goal kick on the ground, kicks from half-back flank, and Woods punches away from Campbell. And a boundary throw in. Isn't it great, Malcolm, uh, to wind the clock back a few years and, <laughs> and, and look at the, the energy of that young player. Like he's he's 100 and 140 metres out of his position, but he just wants to get there and do something for his team. It's amazing. Ball kick forward. Killaway goes the punch. Gale helps out the back and forces it over the line as well. I give up on tipping. I've tipped Richmond the last four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what against them this week. <laughs> yes, Richardson's kicked 73 goals for the year now. He's in third spot at the moment. So uh, with Lockett not playing, low playing, of course. So a very productive year. And when you see, you know, we were a bit critical earlier. When you see him chase like that, that just just makes him the complete team player then. Young Benny Holland off and uh, young Joel Bowden for his first on for Richmond. Yes, I think in Melbourne we say Bowden. Uh, Bowden. Yeah. Unlike yeah. that suburb in Adelaide, Neil. Yes, Bowden's fine with me. Yeah. Bond screws the ball around. Oh, well done, Chris you, Langford. It's a great duel back there. Langford, 
Uh, then that, okay, Richardson's kicked his, his goals, but Langford has still done well. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's a hard call. And remembering that he didn't start off on him That's either. That's right. No, he had, I think, three or four. Yeah. Ball in underneath. So just a bit of unproductive play here. Settle wing. Well, the Hawthorne I saw last week, and I know football changes every week, not on Patrick when I'm watching today. Mark Nash throws it up. Half it. Kicks the ball back in towards centre-half forward. Now it falls for Crummel. Good handball here, could set something up. Trelevin caught from Rogers. The tackling's been great. Yes. High tackle over Michael Gale. Richmond's defensive action, Malcolm, has been very good today, particularly in the defensive area. Their players are committed, they're accountable for their opponent, and they're doing it very well. Into open territory from the uh, bounce. Crawford comes along the ground with a soccer kick, but here comes Charles, keeps the ball in front. Crawford makes the dive, as you can see, comes out to Callaway, just gets that boot in, goes a couple of metres. Both Knights and Broadbury looked as though they're waiting for it uh, to see who was going to take it. Thrown out of the way, Bond, the umpire said you had a couple of chances. Too high. And he's going to say it's too high. I think the 51% uh, is in the freeze have gone uh, Richmond's way today. Buller slips over, he kicks in towards half forward. Miranda up, forces it down right. with the left hand, well breaks away. Had a good couple of games, Miranda is playing well, and here he is. Oh, Richardson, when we're just about to nail him, uh, saying he's definitely got it, just slipped through his hands. Takes the, uh, the hard ones, loses the easy ones. The kick coming out from half back by Tellus out towards Holland. Holland goes for the quick handball over to Woods. Woods lets it go from centre half four. They badly need something here, and Kepler gives the shove away, but he couldn't take the mark. Gasper retains the cool, and a kick along the ground, and it's gone through. <laughs> Kepler. Well, that just about defies description. He dropped, he made beautiful position for his for his mark. He dropped what he should have taken, but G recovered. Here we will see it here in action. Like he, he's got Casper under the ball, dropped it, but recovered very well. And this is a this is a great goal. That's that's superb football by that boy. The second or third commitment. Very valuable goal. I think Crummel's it, yes. Crummel's, I think, pulled a hamstring here. He's coming off the ground. We're back in the centre. 27-point margin to Richmond. Just under six minutes to go. Knights runs at it. Socked off the ground by Stevenson. Platten. Support from Trelevens. Getting kicks. Kicks the ball forward. Harford can't get the lucky bounce to Rogers. Players out wide. Salmon comes at it. So does Bullis. The two big fellas collide. Great contest. Terrific little pick up by Moore then. Off yep. to Broderick. Great give. Richardson. This is this is the day. This is why Richardson is just such a hard player to handle. His movement was out to the flank originally. He saw the give back to the Richmond boy in the centre. He doubled back around Langford, offered himself in the centre of the ground, and the Richmond boys found him. He's <laughs> He's a super player. So the Hawks got one back after Richmond had kicked the two goals of this quarter. And Matthew Richardson lining up for his seventh. Goes back a long way, which I think is good. He gets a nice balance. Kick from just inside 50. Sets it up in the air. Just pushed it a bit across to the right. Wasn't that bad a kick, really. He's disappointed with it. It's good It's good to see that set up, Malcolm, and Richardson. He went way back for his kick and took the kicking out of the man on the mark away, which, of course, is an absolute football sin. Yes, and a couple in trouble there. Brendan Crummel and, of course, the skipper, the champion, Jason Dunstall. He's not all that confident on that knee. No, I can't see Dunstall coming back at all. And the kick-in comes to Mark Graham. Mark Graham is in a half-back. We'll go to the southern grandstand side of Optus Oval. Gets the lead. Holland with a touch of the ball, couldn't bring it down. Little handball off towards Broderick. Broderick into centre half forward again. Out they come. Benny Gale had the chance, couldn't quite bring it down. Bond will sneak through. Handballs it back towards Benny Gale, who taps it over towards half forward. Runs through Bowden's legs. Justin Charles, after it does well to keep it in the forward line, tries to tap it back out to Bowden. Players diving in on top. Langford got it over. Another one to Collins. Collins out towards Graham with a bit of space there. If he can get it away, is there anyone leading for him? Further up towards the wing. A little shove on the back with the umpire say. No. Now in play to go on. And Nick Holland has one bounce. 
pushes it into the turf because you've seen it slip away a few times. That time he gave it an extra shove and really went back over his head. Callaway at the back will take the ball and will leave out towards Bond on the wing. He's leading Stevenson to the ball, handballs it back to Knights. They've got a couple spare here to deliver it out. Rogers will take it out wide in the wing. Swings onto the left. Here comes Gale, and oh. Benny Gale has brought it down. And will take another shot for goal. As I mentioned before, he came into this one. 17 uh, games and 18 goals before the day, but he's now up to 21. He's passed it off. Down towards Charles, and Charles shoots for goal, and it's only one behind. Gee, Mal one. Malcolm, as you know, it does give your midfielders and your running players confidence when you have two big players up front that can mark the ball against opposition. They can just bomb it in there for, the, for their long option, and, and they know they're not hurting the team. Yes, amazingly, Benny Gale's got to his 10th mark, so he's certainly been a danger up forward. Jenky, he's out of side wide. Rinder does well. So does Collins to get it back to Graham. He can run through to centre wing. Now it goes back in towards the centre half forward. Coming over the top with a very well judged mark is Crawford. Hits the ground and runs. Has a player out wide in Condon. Condon wants to go back into the ah. middle. Smothered beautifully by Burke. Big turnover this. Ends up with Nash. And Richardson's already back on the goal line by himself. All he has to do is just kick it to him or kick it long. He tries to kick to a gap. Now has to come at it. Can't get hold of it. Jenky reads it very well. Tallis back to Woods. And the Hawks under enormous pressure. We saw the desperation uh, of young Burke there in the centre. And this is what Richmond have been doing all day. It's not, it's not the pretty things that they've been doing to get them ahead. It's the desperate little teamwork things. And uh, they're ahead of Hawthorne in that department. Here's 29-point lead. And just on the just on two, two minutes 37. Daffy back on. Powell breaks through the tackle. One on one again. Langford again does well by keeping the ball in front of him. And then see Richardson just stops. That's when he just lets himself down. Perhaps a bit of pressure from behind there would have helped the team. Nevertheless, the ball's out wide. Harford's got it. He's got no one in front of him. Bullis has filled in the gap beautifully. Almost got it. Platten comes across to try and help. So does Gale. Broderick's really controlled this football from the middle. Back to Bullis. Can't get hold of it. Hargraves ducks his head off to Stevenson, has support from Harford, and Harford goes very long and high. One on one contest over the back, Taylor running into an open goal and has kicked it. Hit the post. Hit the post. Kick the post, I mean. Yeah, that was a goal that uh, was desperately needed by Hawthorne. They're, they're, they're doing all the hard work, they just can't seem to get the score on the board. 12, 9, 81 to 8, 5, 53 is how it reads with 23 and a half minutes down to the outer side. Ball in Charles' possession is caught. Proud trying for free kicks there right on the toes. Hawthorne badly needs something as Neil mentioned. Oh, Salmon went for a handball and has given it up to Miranda who's charging down the outer side wing. Looks for the long handball over the top to Bullis well down the ground. A further one over the top. This is young Powell. He's done well particularly in the second quarter, swings it in with that left footer's hook, and I think it's coming back. I think it's going to be another goal on the board. It is. Well, you don't call that a nail. You call that an actual pile driver. That was a costly turnover, and Richmond made them pay dearly, both on the ground and on the scoreboard. That's going to hurt off on that one. Take a lot of the zap out of them. Good to see young Powell finish because... He has been a live wire across that half forward flank. He's, he makes his uh, position, creates opportunities. Back in the centre. Richmond really just dominating three goals to one in this third quarter. Tallis breaks clear and working his way to the front's Taylor. He missed that last goal by hitting the post for Hawthorne. Kicks out wide, Kapler and Gasper. Gasper works the ball to his own advantage. What a quick kick. Knights also tries to work it to his advantage. Caught by Trelevin. Goes back towards the boundary line. And pretty good play in the end. Amazing play in Knights. Malcolm is in full fight. He's very, very good at the moment. Still feeling his way along. But, gee, he's got a beautiful brain. Very clever, cool, calculating brain. So throw in. Half forward flank for Hawthorne. Just to tap it over the top was Taylor. Burke. He throws it onto his boot, which again towards the boundary line and out of bounds. 
what's the old saying when you when 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 son when you can keep your head about you and all those around you are losing theirs you'll be a man my son that's exactly right something like that and it's good to see cool football brains out on the football field nothing wrong with this don't get involved umpires leave with the players <laughs> boundary throw in oh great tap from salmon down to crawford then condon now kepler comes again on a searching lead the ball falls platten can't get hold of it goes right with him now he can find some space Wants to well buy done. some time, kicks it over the top, and terrific play to set up to 11. We saw the cool head there, the old, the old pro. But the, the different options at either end of the ground, with, with Richmond we have Richardson up here and Gale offering the tall man, whereas up in the other area we have Kepler, a uh, wingman, trying to do the work at full forward. So the siren sounds. Just on the boundary line was... Uh, Jason Dunstall just running around a bit as Trelevin kicks and has kicked the goal after the siren to end this third quarter. Just a super important goal. And just going back to Jason Dunstall, who came off during this quarter with a knee injury, has tape on his leg across his knee, but just went for a quite little jog before. No, he's, no, I'd say, Malcolm, he's, uh, he's out of the game. It's just, it's one of those, we don't quite know how bad it is, but it's certainly bad enough to keep him out of the game. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't yeah, you? It came down very awkwardly during the quarter, and that was probably the big news of the quarter, when perhaps Hawthorne may have had their chance, their leading goal kicker was off the ground, as the players start moving to the huddle. Well, if you reverse the situation, you take Richardson out and leave Dunstall there, it's a, it's a huge difference in, in the team play. Yes, indeed it is. So three-quarter time here at Optus Oval. Richmond 13-9-87. Hawthorne 9-5-59. They'll trail by 28 points. Start of the final quarter. Richmond versus Hawthorne. And Richmond lead by 28 points in really a position in the eight at the end of round 17. Bounce. Charles and Salmon at it. Gets a second belt. Falls to Condon. Needs help, ah. just gives up the footy to Burke. Burke swings the ball back inside 50. Dominated that in that area, have Richmond. Twice as many times they've crossed the line. And with handball, they work it out to Stevenson. Ah. Caught, and the ball falls back to Charles. This should be easy. Richardson dropping back, has help from behind. Can't get it. Oh, running on power. And is open in a blaze of glory. That's a half forward Crummer's goal, beautifully read by young Powell. That's about his 14th kick and his second goal. And as I see it now, Malcolm, I always try and work out that if Richmond kick here, yeah, that their normal quarterly score of three goals, that means that Hawthorne have to kick something like eight or nine goals to win the football match this quarter. And I think that's going to be a bit beyond them, but beautiful bit of scouting there by young Powell. And he's really making his presence felt in this game. Just his third game, but certainly opened up a little bit uh, last week and now coming on this week. Bond trying to get it out. They've got a hold of him and the umpire will claim the ball yet again. Well, we saw the turnover there in, at midfield again uh, by Richmond's persistent with their physical presence. They put Hawthorne on a tremendous pressure and won the ball back. Justin Charles, too good in the ruck, gets it down. And ball from... Oh, taken again. Once again, out to Miranda from Bond. Miranda on the run, tries to get it in towards Richardson and, and, and down there is Benny Gale. Gale tries to force it out, goes into open territory and then a run to it by young uh, Moore on the ground, but it hits the behind post, it'll be a throw in. I think that must have been about between six to ten times that the Richmond boys have actually blocked the handball uh, in flight today. Been so alert, haven't they? Mm. Holland and Gale whipped over the back Holland will take it the second time after competing in the ruck here's three Tigers all on the Richardson. lane and Richardson right <laughs> up the ground Richardson turns around off to Calville kicked to try and mark and Trelevin took the game step and came across and grabbed it out to Tellus and a further handball off Crawford will come around looking for someone is there anyone home Salmon into half forward and takes the mark handballs it off to Crawford hasn't been a dominating play today Crawford three Tigers down there where he's landed the ball Gasper will raffle it up out to Callaway, Callaway with a top back out the ground, locked away that time from Daffy, falls to ground, Kapler goes in, oh good spin out, oh good pick up by Trelevin, the shark, it now is an opportunity, 
Capital back in position, fires forwards, goal, dead centre. Well, I don't think uh, Ken Judge can expect Kepler to take too many overhead marks down there against Gasper. That's the type of game he has to play to be an alert crummer, quick movement and, and run Gasper around uh, to feature in the goals. He just can't outmark him. But they're persisting Hawthorne. It's a huge, it's a huge challenge ahead of them, but who knows in football, it's happened before. Walk the time now as a bit of drizzle comes here at Optus Oval. Hawthorne get a goal closer. Just under 18 minutes to go for the last quarter. Crawford goes back to Langford and torpedoes it to empty space. Burke will be first back onto it. The ball sits kind, it should be right. Platten comes at him now. Gale tries to help Burke and Platten grabs hold of Burke by the leg. So a free kick, defensive 50. And the youngster comes along the boundary line. Flyers wanted. 11 over the top, can't get hold of it. It was Mark Graham it was. Off to Bond. Bond now goes back in towards Richardson and Langford. Puts Langford underneath the ball. Collins comes in to help his veteran teammate. Caught. Ball stays roughly in the area. Condon can't get hold of it. Campbell can. Sells the dummy with the handball. Under pressure, gives it up. Condon goes back for another go. Langford also. Tallis gives it off to Crawford. And the kick comes back into the centre square. Players run hard at it. Crawford found some space. Off to Woods. Well, he really has put him at task. Crawford caught. The handball doesn't find Platten. And Platten, under enormous pressure from Richmond, as Gale breaks away, supports there from Bond. Bond now looks forward. Goes long. Gale from behind. Oh, strong. Has got it. Very strong. He's been strong all day. It must be uh, 10 marks, 11 marks, something like that. 11 marks. He really has offered the Richmond midfielders and running players a blind target up there. They haven't had to look for him, just put the ball up high and go with his tremendous physical strength and great hands has finished their work off. And he's lining up for, what, his fourth goal? Maybe his fourth goal. And this would be another huge nail for Hawthorne. But gee, young Bond's been good today at ground level and also as a running player. So Brendan Gale has got one in the first, second and third quarter, so this to get a full deck. Kicks. Yeah. Now he's just pushed it off to the right a bit. And the rain... Oh, no, he hasn't. Gee whiz, that's a, it's a goal. So he's got his fourth. Yeah, well, and as the game, as players get tired, of course, the big man power presents itself more often. And, uh, you know, the running players start to get tired, but the height still remains. And that's something, of course, in Richmond's favour. Thirty-four points the difference as the ball's bounced once again. Sam in a second swipe falls down. Burke slips over and gets his kick in at the same time. High torpedo and is Richardson off the ground. Crowd rises, he rises, and the ball going to be balled up in it uh, just at, over the top of the square. It's not a criticism, but it's an area that uh, young Richardson just still can improve his football. That he just takes his eyes off that mark at the last critical second. Now going for the ruck, flip down, quick one out by half. It gets into open territory. A little kick into half forward and a juggling grab by Hargraves. He's tried hard all day today, Hargraves. He's one that's put his head down. Centres the ball, but Gasper now full of chock confidence after Dunstall's gone off the ground. Was fighting well against uh, Dunstall. And as uh, Mel, I think, earlier, doesn't give in. He keeps going. And he's passed now out to Michael Gale. Tiger's got the numbers and the players. Callaway accepts the pass. Went about 25 metres. They've got control of the game at the moment. Richmond just looking as though, where will we go? How will we do it the best way? And that's a good grab by Woods over the back that time. Came in on top of Richardson. This is the area where Woods struggles a little bit. Goes wide, just goes straight across the ground to Jason Taylor. Now they'll come back inside to Crawford. He's been a worker all the time, Crawford. There's no doubt about him. Out to Condon. Condon, only one against two there, and he's had to give it up. Now he goes back in to make the second effort, and it does well. Whips it out in the open territory, and here's Crawford. He's gained about 40 metres as he kept running down the ground. 
He really works. In towards full forward. Kapler got a finger to the ball. This is off the ground. Could be close. It could be good. It's there. Well, they won't. They're not lying down. Oh, I thought that was a super effort out on the wing by Young Brendan, Crawford. Brendan Crummel. Crummel, was it? He's kicked the goal. Oh, Crummel's kicked the goal. But, gee, what yeah. an effort out there by Young Crawford. Uh, he put himself in trouble, but fought very, very hard to get the ball back in and give his forwards a chance. And uh, but Hawthorne's goals are coming from you know, off the ground and bits and pieces, whereas at the other end they're coming a lot smoother for Richmond. The margin back to 28 points. Yes, they're not to be denied, Hawthorne. They have uh, struggled hard, particularly with their champion goal kicker off in this second half. Great contest across half back. Moore picks the ball up off the ground. So does Campbell, and a smart handball back to Powell. Goes forward, in front goal, can't get hold of it. Now goes to ground. Holland keeps his feet, gets himself out of a bit of trouble. Goes out to Crawford. Collins puts it on the ground. Has a bit of time, though. Crawford helps him out with the Shepherd, yeah. and then just kicks it. Charles comes over the back of Taylor, and Burke is pretty happy to let it out of bounds. Centre wing. If there has been a department of Hawthorne that's uh, hurt them today, it's been their disposal, particularly with their long leg. They've just kicked to the strength of Richmond. That's by 28 points. Charles taps it down, which is caught. Free kick almost paid to Condon then, Killaway. Another one of those Richmond players that can kick it quickly under pressure. The big jump from Richardson to Miranda, swamped. Off the ground goes Langford. Crawford comes at it. Just awareness of players around him. Broderick knocks it out wide to Nash. And on hands and knees, just belts it forward to Burke. Miranda kicks it quickly around the corner. But the kick falls short. And Chris Langford stands in the way. It's been a great duel. Langford and Richardson. I don't know who Neil's going to get the uh, votes for for the day, but I'll tell you what, for the excitement, Richardson certainly been there. Driven in towards the full forward line, but they've got the numbers back here and dropping back Matthew Knights to take the mark about 40 out from goal. Well, he's pretty cool, this fellow, and uh, you can bet you that it'll, it'll finish in Richmond's hands. Ignores the lead from Charles, who was coming into centre half back. Looked like a good lead at the time, too, and Miranda charges down the boundary line to accept the flying kick from Matthews, but it goes over the line. And that what would be the coaching area, Neil, instead of coming out to halfback, go out and block it up on the defensive side. Well, when you're in front, of course, you don't take the risk to uh, let the players back in down the corridor, so I guess you play it wide. Always been about that 4-4 difference since the yes. half-time break, hasn't it? It's just, if uh, Hawthorne get one, it's straight away back with that 4-4 or around about the four-odd goals. Crawford comes out after a couple of slips. And the ball into the centre of the ground. Opportunity knocking here for the Tigers. Trying to pick it up as Powell, but the umpire's found a free kick behind the play. It'll come out to Bond. He's aggravating, he's tantalising as far as the opponents are concerned. And Graham stands the mark after giving away the free kick, and Bond delivers to the wing. And here he is again, Richardson. Yeah, take him on. Now he's tries take to take on. on Langford. The old war horse and the young Tiger. They go at it, and I think you'll say that Langford has just about won that one nil by stopping it. I think there's still a couple of teeth in the old war horse yet. And, uh, but uh, Richardson, he backed himself and took him on. They haven't lost anything. They just lost, uh, just lost the ball, but they gained some yardage. 11 minutes gone in the final term. Hawthorne still those... 28 uh, points behind as the ball's thrown in towards the uh, half-back line and just dribble back over the line and out of bounds. And this is suiting Richmond, of course. It's, it's not Richmond have to make the play. Hawthorne with a team, if they want to win, have to make the play. And Dunstall back on the ground. That's great to see. And Howard coming on with him. Dyson Taylor, front position, gets it down. Oh, bad miss by Jenke. Picked up by Condon. Condon out to Harford. Harford with another handball. Woods into the oh. centre. Oh, Miranda will intercept. Takes it one hand. Plays on immediately. Torpedoes towards goal. It'll go to the pocket. And the mark to Daffy in the pocket. He's got two other men there. He could have whipped it over. Hasn't had time. In this situation, Ian, there's no need to rush. Um, Hawthorne had the game in... The, uh, Richmond had the game in their keeping. And... Uh, don't take unnecessary chances. Runs around, puts it on the left. Goal umpire steps up to the centre, says one behind only. Tigers 15, 10, 100, they've hit the three figures. Hawthorne 11, 5, 71. We've gone 12 and a half minutes in the final turn. Well, Malcolm, I hope, I hope Dunstall's OK. I hope he's not coming back on just to try and prove something because you wouldn't want him to suffer a, a more serious injury that knee. 
as you wouldn't believe it. Now, I was just thinking the same thing. Is this oh, a great mark to Holland at centre-half back from the kick-out? You just wonder if this is what Ken Judge believes or whether Jason Dunstall believes that maybe, maybe his their presence. season. Yeah, yeah, it could be. And uh, Dunstall out there with his presence may, may just lift the players a bit. Wouldn't want it to be his career, though. No, no. You'd, well, I guess Jason's uh, responsible enough to assess that. Yeah, there's still just you know just under 11 minutes remaining, so I mean they're not out of it. Just but uh, the Tigers, as Ian's mentioned a couple of times, just had control of that game by that four or five goals. Not quite doing enough, Hawthorne. They just they just can't establish some some good clean movement through the midfield. Crawford's been a very good player in the second half. He has got a lot of the footy, so he's lifted. Yes. Dennis Ritz throws it up. Courts crummel. Charles belts it forward. And that man, <laughs> Matthew Richardson, plays from behind a bit, but... Uh, he's, a, just a, he's just a constant danger. He, he, he's got that uncanny knack that all champions do have of just being able to assess the situation, read the play well, and put himself in the correct position, whether it be in front or from the back. That's what makes him so unpredictable, though. You never know where he's coming from, do you? And that's what makes a champion. Matthew Richardson. Kicks from 45 metres. Made the distance easy. I'd suggest not the accuracy. And he kicks his third point for the afternoon. He's kicked three, six goals three out of that 15-11. So the margin, 30 points or five goals for Hawthorne to recover in this nine and a half minutes of the final term. Good blocking to allow Graham to take the mark on the kick out. Comes down short and here's Langford working his way down the ground. Langford into centre half forward. Interception before Salmon could get it by Charles. Working at the back. Almost around the neck it would have paid there to Matthew Knight. Umpire says no as Bond dishes it off out in the half back to Michael Gale. A long handball up to Miranda Point about 20 metres. Miranda been working extremely well. Screws it back. And uh, what have we got here? Matthew Richardson again but he spilt that one. Falls to ground. Charging it after the ball, umpire has found a free kick. Didn't see what it was for. Hanging on to it, hanging on. That's that's the one part of his game where young Richards can still improve his football. Is taking possession of those marks with a clean one grab. So Collins takes the run and brings it right across the ground. Didn't get much in distance, but Holland is down there. He's fumbled it, caught. Now gets away with a handball to Woods. Went about 15, 20 metres to handball. Now here's opportunity knocking. Graham in a bit of open space, but he's got to get rid of it. Great work by Rogers. Unbelievable work, and that's how they've been working hard all day now. Hey, I already made 10 metres on that boy then. It was super stuff. And does that inspire the rest of the team? It's fantastic footy. Well, you can almost put that down to a window Richmond right now. Yes. If their players are going to continue to do that, they'll win the hard ones. Just the, uh, yes, the kick has found Knights, just close, and Matthew Knights just slows this down a bit now. He'll get it back here, young Rogers. No, he doesn't want it, he's too exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Knights calling will go to the boundary a bit, and he hits that way. Richardson, Langford in front. Small each other, the Hawthorne plays. Good tap on by Richardson, off to Broderick. And it's just a tired kick forward, really. Poor finish, wasn't it, by Broderick? He's, yeah. a, he's a class player on that left leg. Yeah, socks are down. He looks tired. <laughs> he doesn't believe that he just did that as the ball falls over the line. So a boundary throw in. Now he's worked pretty hard again, though, Paul yes. Broderick. Not normal stats that he gets, but uh, certainly good ones. Gale out of the air, kicks the ball forward. Miranda back over his head. What is that? Oh, don't tell me. No, he's missed. If he had have kicked that one, Malcolm, I would have left that for you to describe. I think it was a, uh, a Pelé... Uh, I don't care what's a strike. Look at this. Here it goes. Whoop. It's actually the slip probably caused him some problems yes. here, rather than the actual technique of it. it was, let's say it was imaginative. <laughs> and when you're hot, you might as well keep going with it. And keep well, the kettle boiling. Might be an important point. It was a very too. valuable point. It put them 12 points to five, so it gives them an extra goal. Now, Ray Janky gets a couple of leads here to the Northern Grandstand side. A look across and a dish out by Harford and get it out in the open territory to Pritchard. Umpire says he was held and Harford will come back and take it. Tiger fans not happy. The roar of the Tiger from the fans. At the halfback, Bond almost able to intercept. Crawford still working hard, can't get it. Matthew Knight's out to Miranda. 
Miranda, 15, 20 metres down, they'll allow teammate Bond to come through because he's running towards goal, and the finish is great. A little tap out by Knights there, we just, we mentioned it before, his, his brain's just so cool. He's not, he's not fully fit with that ankle recovery yet. Uh, and Marinda's quick give. And this little fella here, Bond, he's been way up in Richmond's best players. He's, he just continues to work and work and work because you wouldn't say he's got uh, tremendous ability, but gee whiz, he makes, he makes use of everything he does have. Very difficult now for Hawthorne as Richmond extend their lead. Charles taps it forward. Crawford just can't get hold of it. Campbell runs onto it. Gives up the footy. Langford tried pretty hard today, Chris Langford. Just belts it back long. Pushing and shoving it centre half forward. And picked up here by Hudson. Comes out wide. Here's Mark Graham. And Graham takes the mark. Gives it off quickly to 11. And he goes short to Condon. So once again, the Hawks not to be denied. We haven't, we haven't seen enough across that half forward line of both on the day. Hudson's been well down. Highland's been shifted to defence. They just haven't produced enough across there. So Anthony Condon kicks and just pushes it to the right. So disappointing finish there for Condon. I think you have to say whatever chance Hawthorne had of winning the football match went when Dunstall was forced to leave the ground. He was their focal point up forward, providing the goals, and they've just dried up since then. And Matthew Knights takes the kick out. Kicked it to himself and then out to Miranda. One of the, the better players, you'd have to say, for the Tigers, continuing on his good form of recent weeks. He didn't wear his underarm today because he's been alone all day. <laughs> Into half forward, out the back. Here's a hard worker. A little kick up in the air by Daffy's, who's brought to ground. Falls in with Collins coming away. He'll come straight through the centre, then out towards the other side to Crawford. You blokes would love to coach this bloke, wouldn't you? Well, he coaches himself, doesn't he? He's a tremendously professional player. Shane Crawford from Finlay in towards the full forward line. Interception by Charles, who has really worked his way back into the game after someone's getting a lot of taps. Gasper picks up out the halfback. Here's Miranda back in the action again, going towards the boundary line to 11 there. But Miranda back for the second effort, gets the handball down the ground to Bond. I think umpire allowed play to go, and he's going to pick up something at the back. But the Tigers coming down the ground and dribble it over the line out of bounds. Who's down, Neil? Miranda, is it? Gee, yeah. Miranda has, uh, has emerged as a really good player this year, Malcolm. He's, uh, he's come of age virtually, and uh, they're, they're using him all over the, in all positions now, and he's coming up trumps in most of them. 18 kicks, four marks, and six handballs, and three tackles. It's a busy afternoon for the young fellow. And he's still only, I think, around uh, 20 years of age. He is at that. Locked down the ground. Hawthorne opportunity knocking again. Can they do something with it? Tellus gets the handball away. Back to Tellus. Boots into half forward and out in the lead is Kapler. Oh, he spills it off the chest. Bad one to miss. Handball off to Gasper. Tigers working well as a unit. And the defence has been tremendous. They've been alert all day. Up towards Matthew Richardson. He's got Langford coming in at him. Again. <laughs> and he swings it around back to the full forward position. Gale down there doing battle with Holland. Flipped out in the open towards the pocket. And Jenky will try and see it over. It looked as though it was going to change its mind on it, but finally it went the right way as far as Jenky was concerned, back over the line. Maybe a hard call on young Kapler, but those marks must be taken when we see Dunstall leaving the ground again. But, you know, you must take those matches to keep your team in, in, in the game. You must take those catches. They've just got to be taken. Boundary throw in. Tapped over the back. Daffy is good in this situation. So tell us his time. Gets hold of him. Handball from Collins to Woods. Coming down the middle of the ground, it's a vacant centre-half forward area. No one there whatsoever. Now Hargraves runs hard at it. Good, well done, son. And deserved the free kick. Yes, he did go hard at it. He took the straight line. Didn't deviate. Yeah, tragic uh, Jason Dunstall. Just get in the action as he, when he came back. Nice long kick. One-on-one -on -one in the goal square. Players push and eventually off the player's arms and over for a behind. Well, we've both seen enough football to realise, Malcolm, you, you just don't recover quickly on an injury like that. that that's a nasty injury, that one, for Dunstall. Matthew Knights again to himself, then brings it out to half-back flank, and Howard will get his first touch on the footy. And the crowd goes up for the Tiger supporters who are on good terms with themselves at the moment, and so well they should be. 22 and a half minutes gone, all getting it off, trying to get Howard and another one, but it was intercepted. Salmon goes in, knocked out of his grasp. Powell comes down allows his teammate to pick it up and Rogers will bring it back out towards Matthew Richardson. How tired would 
how tired would uh, Langford be today? He's covered more ground the early set was trying to chase this young stallion. You'd probably put uh, both in their best players though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Langford trying for Hawthorne. He's played very well. Now uh, it goes to Hudson, another one of the rare touches. Collins keeps his head down, looking for around the neck. Didn't quite get it, but uh, Hudson will get it. The kick over now to Trelevin. Trelevin looking for someone. All Tigers down there. There was no Hawks. Now he has to go out wide, but still half it will have no one to go to. He's had to take on Miranda. Miranda boxing him into a corner. Now gets it back to Trelevin, but there's still only, well, only about one player wow. down here trying to go for the ball. A little knock-on. Going to be picked up by Broderick. He'll swing back. Short passes to Naish. And the Richmond controlling the football again. In towards Justin Charles. He's finished it off pretty well, Neil. After yes, he has. The early work against Salmon. The kick to half four, and here comes the duel of the day. A bit hard. And it's Langford against Richardson. Langford not happy, as you can see. I'd like to see it on replay, Ian. I, I couldn't see a free there. The umpire did, but no, I think that's a, that's a harsh call. And it's even harsher now. Well, I, I thought Langford did everything within the rules to prevent Richardson marking, and then you get a little man who come in and <laughs> not only penalise you, but also... Take Unless it back into the grain sand. The umpire's got to take the ball and go home, I think. That's a hard call, and uh, I sympathise with Langford there. I don't, I don't know what he expected Langford to stand aside and let Richardson mark the ball unopposed. Miranda off and Bowden on as we're waiting for Richardson to get it. Well, he's got 6-3 uh, so far on the tally to board today, and this should be a Monty. And it is. Seventh goal. Yeah, it's a tough one, and because uh, he's given his heart and soul, Langford, and so too is Richardson. He's played a fine game, but I thought the contest for the ball was a fair one, and he will see it again. Let's have a look at it, Malcolm. Can you see anything wrong here? Yeah, he go actually goes across, and but, you see that. That's not... I've seen uh, I've been a bit, that a million times and paid twice. Yeah, that's a harsh call. Still... Richmond forging ahead as a whistle. And it goes Richmond's way. Naturally, it seems to be going their way now. Somebody crossed the line first, I think. Yeah, 35 point margin. Big fly up forward. Holland from behind takes a very well judged mark. As a coach, you wouldn't like to see it too often, would you? Oh, here we go again. Uh, <laughs> the block Campbell. By Campbell. Goes back inside. Gale almost. Ah, uh, well played, Langford. Langford again. Well, he's not happy. He's. Now, if you take it off him, umpire, if you take that ball off him... Yeah, well done. I think he was tempted, Neil, the umpire. Oh, look. The players, they've got a heart, they've got emotion, and, and umpires do frustrate them. He goes wide to Trelevin. Beautiful kick into the middle of the talus. There's runners there in Condon. Brings the ball forward, and Holland has to wait. Gale does well from behind, goes to ground, and Hudson does. Roderick goes off the ground and out of bounds. It's so been a, it's under been two a, minutes, Neil. It's been a great football match. You know, really fought and played under tremendous spirit and conditions, and it's been great today. Ready for the boundary line throw-in. Little bustling in the ruck. Jason Taylor tried to flip it over the back. Condon made the tackle almost prematurely, but the umpire will come in and... Uh, throw it back in the air. This is how it's third appearance for the season. I didn't think you'd uh, got him to the senior ranks. Umpire, time ticking away. Tigers content just to hold the, the play up and control the game. They've got a good lead at the moment as Nash takes it, sends it back over the boundary line. Richmond 17-12, Hawthorne 11-7 and time ticking up towards the siren. I think all players on both sides are being congratulated. They've played the game in a really tough, hard, physical manner, but it's, there's been no spite and it's been played under under, you know, within the rules. Now, we saw interferences and the advantage played. It was going to go to Bullis' way, and Campbell broke out of the centre and towards the half-forward line. And the Langford back again. I'll check, uh, and hang on. Free kick. We've got another free kick further down the ground. It's going back to Hawthorne. So it goes backwards by about 10 metres at that stage. Almost penalising the side, I suppose, as Trelevin bounces away. Swips it out about 70 out. Short of Stevenson, doesn't help. And here's the tenacious Bond in. Throws the... The chesty Bond chest out and tries to drag it down. Woods, who started well but has been beaten after the uh, first quarter. A little kick back by Campbell. It wasn't probably the distance. Umpire call play on us to 11. Shoved it towards the boundary line. He's going to ping him. And 
Everything is going against the Hawks at the moment. The Tigers right on top, and Trelevin says you've got to be joking. Well, they must think they're magicians, some of these players. Still, young Bowden's not going to uh, worry. Joel Bowden drives in towards the half-forward line. <laughs> Falling to ground as he got it away that time into the woods, the forward pocket. Gasper now right up there after chasing after the handball by Benny Gale. Goes into the pocket, and we're going to wait for the umpire's pleasure. Uh, Malcolm, as you only too well know, that all the coach can ask for when he sends his team out is to give it 100%, play hard, play direct, and, and all the players have done that today. And there is the siren, and this side has. Richmond have played very hard indeed. Matthew Richardson, one of the stars of the game, kicked seven goals and had a real hand. Uh, Shane Crawford, many positions in the second half. And this was a, such an important win for Richmond. They had to win this to get back into the eight. They lost that position last week by losing to Essendon. Hawthorne had snuck their spot. And now, Richmond climb back in now. Well, you have to have a, have a look at their team today. It was a fantastic team performance. Their tenacity, their commitment, their enthusiasm, and their attack on the ball was absolutely first class. And then you add to that, their attack on the Hawthorne players when they had possession, that, that they, they denied them free passage towards goal. Their midfield was good. They blocked up across there. Their defence was superb. And they just had, uh, they just denied Hawthorne uh, the, the avenue to goal. And of course, when Dunstall was forced to leave the ground, that made it so much easier. Yes, it certainly is big news from the game, isn't it? Jason Dunstall came back on for probably 10 minutes and really just didn't look right, did he? But Hawthorne, perhaps he made the call, perhaps Ken Judge made the call, but they felt that important, that this game was that important for them to try and nail it. Miranda, a very good player, worked hard on his wing, Bond in the background, 35, terrific. And really, what more can you say? The Tigers had to stand up and be counted today, and they did. Hawthorne weren't disgraced. They've had a good couple of months. Robert Walls, coach of Richmond, working forward, and Back to a hero today after, <laughs> after recent weeks. Yeah, I think, know about that coaching business. Sure. I, think, uh, I think when you're a coach, when, when you go into the rooms and if you're a winning coach, you say, well, fantastic, well done. If you're a losing coach, there may be some areas sometimes that you can question. But there's no way in the world Ken Judge could question Hawthorne's endeavour today. The players had a crack at it. They were just let down with their finishing skills. They weren't quite good enough with their hand and leg disposal. And Richmond made them pay dearly on turnovers. And uh, they, they were the better side on the day. Yeah, interesting too, uh, Richmond next week to play Brisbane at home. That's the Brisbane home. And uh, Hawthorne play North Melbourne. So both sides not out of the woods. So the mystery of this season unfolds as we head to round 18 next week for these two tied. So at final time here, final score, Richmond 17-12, 114, Hawthorne 11-7, 73. Another huge game on Saturday afternoon at Optus Oval is the big match between Richmond and Hawthorne. And really, ooh, eighth spot could be on the, uh, well, up for grabs here. Let's have a look at the uh, Tigers lineup now. Some changes there too. Howard, Burke, Moore and Bowden. That is Joel Bowden, 18 year old, 188 centimetre forward, recruited from West Alice Springs. His father Michael was the Ruck Rover in Richmond's 1969 Premiership winning side. Uh, going out of the side there, Prescott injured and Ryan, Tape and Tornay have been omitted from the, the side that were beaten by 20 points by Essendon. Richardson kicked five and Campbell two. To the Hawkers and only one change there. Hargraves comes in and Taylor is out of the side that defeated uh, Carlton by 49 points. Hudson back to his best uh, form for the year, kicking four, and Big Jace kicked three, and Big Paul Salmon was BOG for the second week on the trot chase. He's going well. He's been playing particularly well. And, and telling everyone at training about it, apparently. You yeah, uh, from the gym, because he doesn't actually go out and track. <laughs> no, he's been, he's, look, he's been fantastic for us whenever we can get him out in the ground, and uh, <laughs> you know, it, it just gives the on-ballers a chance when your Ruckman's getting his hand to the ball. For just, just quickly, you've lost five of your six games, last six games at Optus Oval. It used to be your home ground once upon yeah. a time. Is it a, a bogey ground for you now? No, we haven't played there for quite a while either, and um, I'm not sure what sort of condition it's in. There wasn't a game there last yeah. weekend, but... It's all right, is it, Sam? Beautiful. I was out there doing club buggery out there the other day. It was magnificent. Mm. Good. Looking forward to it, then. Yeah. I've done it. Oh. When's it on? Uh, it's been on. Well, of course, you are on uh, midday tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and you dropped Jason Taylor. <laughs> well, I didn't uh, drop well, Jason I am on midday, yeah. Sorry, I That's didn't give that as much as I should have. I am. Um, <laughs> you know, in between the 300 other things I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> 
Jason Taylor, you dropped him. What did you say to him after you'd actually knifed him? Dave? I didn't say anything. It was just a change at the. Um, but the you, you are on made. the committee, selection committee. No. You're not? No. Oh, well, you are. So they don't trust your judgment? Jase, so the, the last uh, seven of the last nine games has been a fantastic turnaround for the Hawks. It has been. It has been great. And this is, um, I mean, it's a big game for both sides. They're both in the good position, I guess, of knowing that if you win and keep winning, you stay in the eight. You don't have to rely <laughs> yeah. on anyone else losing. It's what uh, David Parkin calls an eight point game, this one, isn't it? Well, that's right. Well, yeah. It's I worth guess, eight. basically. Worth eight points. Could Jim, I, I, when you were talking to the lads over there, did I hear you say that football has kept you out of representing Australia in the Olympics? No, 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 no. I just said the disappointing thing about football is that uh, you don't get to go to the Olympics. Oh, sorry. I thought sorry. What about uh, dancing? Because Laurie Dwyer was a ballroom dancer, and of course, uh, James, you did a lot of ballet as a young kid, didn't you? Talking <laughs> to me, eh? Yeah. 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 Uh, I did. Oh, not a lot of ballet, a few years of uh, ballet. Really? Yes. Did you? And, uh, the dancing still happens. <laughs> <laughs> ballet boy. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, Do you wear those tight, tight pants? And... Little frilly tutu. And... Yeah. Sam, you know about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't try and deflect the blame. Mate. It's all hanging on you. <laughs> Nothing I can say except. Uh, Do you have any? I did. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't run in Roland at any stage, is it? No, no. But uh, Roland's been quite keen to find out about my dancing career. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. All right, well, let's move on. But did we get tips on that game? Go quickly. Uh, who's going to win? Oh, huge game, this one. Mm. It could be the elimination final replay, but it won't be because it's not a replay. And I'm going to go for... <laughs> Go for Hawthorne. Yes, I think Hawthorne will just win. And Jason, I can't believe you said that Fish doesn't train because at Essendon he was out there every night. Oh, he's got a down pat. He's got his own uh, his own routine. Fish. Right. A tip. Well, who do you think I'm going to tip? Yeah. yeah well, no, I'm actually tipping Richmond. I know I tipped them to beat Essendon last week, but they didn't. But I'm tipping Richmond to beat Hawthorne. All right, let's leave it there. Move on to the next game. They met in round two this year, and on that occasion. Richmond 14-14 beat Hawthorne 6-15 and this is some action I think from that round to clash and here's John Platten. Yeah, we didn't really have a, a real good round uh, this one uh, and I think our, our uh, conference was down as I said at the end of the year we were struggling a couple of uh, new players around the around the place but uh, Jason had just, a different hairstyle yeah Jason's different <laughs> hairstyle that but Do you think that's made the difference <laughs> Jason's hairstyle <laughs> I think the bag and the bag which he's which he's getting from the rest of the boys I think he's making the play well so hopefully that maybe if Jason starts playing bad again he can get his uh, get a cut again so the boys can bag him again exactly Darren Kaplan kicking that ball in there with yeah Kaplan's been great over the last uh, probably five or six weeks he he broke his hand um, early in the year but uh, but it's come back well yeah very handy player I think Ron would know that with Caps he's a great player to have on the on the wing on the halfback flank and, and kicks a long ball down the dunstall and it's uh, mm. just fantastic and what about up at uh, Optus Oval? Do you think that, that suit you better playing up there or do you prefer the wide open spaces of Waverley? Well, I suppose, Gab, we, we like to play at uh, uh, Waverley, you know, big ground there, but, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I think it's, it's a pretty important game for us tomorrow and it doesn't matter where we play, we, we just got to win tomorrow so that we can get to a game and a half clear. And as you've showed in the heavy going anyway, whether the, the, the game slowed up by being a smaller ground or by heavy going, mm. the Hawks are pretty tough in the clinches. We are actually, yeah, and uh, I suppose it brings back, you know, like Sam and them sort of blokes to bring into the game as well because it uh, slows the game down a bit. I'm not saying that pulls slow, but uh, no. it takes a great march around the ground too. Well, now, uh, Duncan Calloway has been uh, one of the unsung stars probably of the Richmond side, although we have realised he's played for Victoria the last couple of years, which is certainly recognition of how well he has been playing, and he is one of the keys in the uh, Richmond side. And uh, during the week, we uh, caught up with Duncan Calloway. Yeah, it was very physical actually last night at training. We got all the contesting work done and a bit of channel work, which was sort of three on three. So it's been very physical. There's been a real emphasis on the tackling and, and probably the physical side of things in general. The right, channel. they are. They've been doing some physical preparation, John. You have a little the, grin the there? Channel. Oh, yes, we, yeah, we, in we the got channel. them out during the week. Yeah, they've been could, training pretty hard. That could be uh, that psych stuff, you know, in the channel. In the Chan channel? Channeling, it's called. Mm. It is. Yeah, We've it done is. the channel. I, I remember the channel from all these days. Mm. Yeah. Very mm. So you swam yeah, the channel. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's, uh, a, a new name for an old thing, is it? Oh no, it's just um, cones are put around the, the boundary line side and it's a, it's a contact three on three all the way down the ground until someone scores. Why is so, it called a channel though? Well, you've got to stay within that channel. Oh, I see. Right. The oh, channel that forms channel. around the ground from yeah, the back pocket down. Um, so okay. it just goes to show, Ron, you're still learning things in football, well, aren't you? You never I stop like learning the, in football. You never stop learning in and football. And what I want to learn now is your tips, John. Oh, well, we've been on fire the last few weeks, so I've got to go for the Hawks. Of course you do. Yeah. Race. 
Yeah, I'll go for Hawthorne. I would think they're in better form than Richmond are, and I think Richmond are a little bit rattled at the moment. Mm, they just they, they look like they've mounted a charge a bit, didn't they, in recent weeks, but they've just fallen back again. Super. Well, after hearing that, I was uh, going to change my decision, but I'm going to go with Richmond. Why are you going for you, 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 well, I just you think boy Richardson, don't you? Don't yeah, you? I think that he's going to be a very hard man to stop for uh, for Hawthorne. And um, Salmon and Charles, that contest in the ruck will be very interesting too. Mm. Charles has been in very good form. He has been. Good athletic player now, and uh, I think Knights will be better for the run for his last couple of weeks. And uh, I just think they'll bounce back, but I'll probably be wrong. <laughs> Ron? Well, I came here going to tip Richmond, being a bit unhappy about, about my tip. I'm sticking with Richmond, but I'm I'm very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will go for Hawthorne that uh, case because last week actually I uh, we we agreed on everything last week, which was stupid. We had the same eight tips, so I didn't make it's any ground up. Because you're behind. I am. I'm five behind. I made up no ground at all. And uh, talking of tipping a little bit later in the program as well, we'll be checking Ron's Olympic gold medal tip as well. <laughs> We're halfway through the Olympics and I think, Ron, you went for 14, but we'll check that a bit later. Now, let's, oh. let's quickly have a look at um, you know, the wrap of games uh, so far in round uh, 17. Brisbane stopped the, uh, the West Coast winning streak at the, uh, the Gabba yesterday uh, afternoon, a margin 47 points. Carlton uh, back on track with a gutsy win against Essendon. Richmond grabbed a do or die victory against the emerging Hawks by 41 points. North Melbourne slaughtered Melbourne by 19 goals. And to go North Melbourne and Sydney fill the top two spots in the ladder from the West Coast and Carlton. Two weeks ago, Geelong was playing for first and second. Now they're a disappointing sixth. And while Richmond and Hawthorne, they're just seesawing in and out of the eight. Now, oh, a win by Hawthorne and Optus <laughs> yesterday against Richmond would have provided one and a half game buffer between the Hawks and the Tigers. Eighth position and September action was at stake. And as it turned out, a very committed Richmond were extremely hard at the ball for 100 minutes. The Tigers were too strong in the air and dominated the second half in the absence of Jason Dunstall. One and very focused. Uh, not to say Hawthorne weren't, but they were really up and about Richmond because this was the most important game of the year for both sides, a la ninth and eighth position respectively trying to get into the finals and Richmond don't have a, uh, a very easy run home in the next five games and I suppose Hawthorne don't either but it was a terrific game highlighted by the fact that Matthew Richardson and Brendan Gale full forward and centre half forward respectively kicked 11 goals between them and that was uh, obviously the telling factor. Uh, Chris Langford, in fairness to him, did a pretty good job, did a very good job on Matthew Richardson, but uh, when the ball's coming down with the uh, class and skill of most of those on-ball utility players that Richmond have, it makes it very hard to uh, stop him being effective. Uh, there's Jason doing his knee there, and uh, that was a bitter blow for Hawthorne. They seem to have the wind taken out of their sails after that. Their leading goal kicker and their captain going off the ground. And this man, uh, well, superlatives are, uh, I suppose, common these days, but he is a marvellous and gifted athlete, as well as being able to play football to a fair extent as well. Um, some other great players for uh, the side were a young man called, um, Justin, uh, called Robert Powell. He did a terrific job. Um, that is he right there, kicking a goal. What Pardon me? Ex-Collingwood player, played in the reserves at Collingwood last uh, year. Yes. Uh, what about Salmon? Uh, Salmon played okay. He, uh, I think, got a bit of a knock when he had a fairly heavy clash with uh, Bullis. He seemed to do a hip and dropped out of it uh, to a certain extent. But, I mean, they were really up against it with those two big men, Richardson and Gale, as I've Sam, said. do you think the, the talk of mergers at Hawthorne may have upset oh. some of the players? No, it could have. Easily, quite easily. It's been a big week for uh, them. Look, I'll I tell you what, Doug. Uh, and Shane is one of them and we are all, in fact, uh, all been part of it. I don't think footballers have enough, enough intelligence oh, to actually think about too many things at once. I reckon that would not enter into the equation one iota. We concentrate on telling people that they should be worried about things. Basically, we all play football what on reflex saying, and instinct. Footballers don't worry about their future? You've got to be kidding. But they don't worry game. about it at two o'clock. Uh, we play on reflex and instinct and the very rare times that anyone thinks about playing football uh, to a chart or to a pre-game plan is crap. So it wouldn't affect Fitzroy then, Sam, you're saying? Shame. What's happened to them all No, it doesn't I'll affect Fitzroy because they can't play, Doug. No. They don't have Shame, talent Doug. enough Let, players. Let's ask Shane. Uh, You'd have uh, to win at least two of your four games. Yes. I was going to ask you a question. Do you think Richmond have any hope of being competitive in the finals? And how does Barassi going to teach Mac and Matthew Richardson how to mark? 
<laughs> well, Ron was very critical yesterday on 3AW, uh, Doug. He <laughs> was very critical of uh, Matthew Richardson. He only kicked seven goals, but Ron contended that he didn't take a mark over his head, and he actually... Uh, told via the radio waves how to mark. That is, you point your big fingers at the ball when it comes at you, you don't cock your wrists or your elbows, and you mark stiff, if you like. And uh, Matthew will take that to his grave, I reckon, remembering that as one of the better pieces of advice he's ever had in football. But uh, don't worry about Richmond. They've got Brisbane, Sydney, Geelong, Fitzroy, North Melbourne, so it's still out of your side, Hawthorne, and still out of Richmond to get that eight spot, I'd suggest, Shane. Certainly, I think... Um, <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Sam, well, Sam, all right, Sam all right. Brendan Gale. Well, a marking Derek. option at centre half forward is critical to Richmond because they haven't been able to take that mark all year. And he's been without forward. Yeah. It hardly requires an answer. That's okay. that is absolutely yeah. Gentlemen, spot on. We are Thank absolutely you. moving along beautifully this afternoon. And that isn't the Tigers' only concern. Goal kicking forward Nick Daffy has had surgery to his right hand and will miss up to a month. I'll be able to run in a couple of days, I think, and uh, some of fitness might be a problem. It's just whether the, uh, the bones heal probably. Can't. And as we Goes know, he is strong oh, overhead. Come at it. Dutch goal. Oh, oh, good take. Oh. A a look at the speed here of Richardson. Kicking towards Richardson, almost had finger to the ball, almost captured the ball. Keeps it going. <laughs> the athletic Richardson. He may not be able to chase from coming out of the fence, but by G, he can run towards goals with it. Badly now, how here. did Kapler get this? Gives the shove away, but he couldn't take the mark. Gasper retains the cool and a kick along the ground, and it's gone through. <laughs> Matty Rogers, always known as a great tackler. Opportunity knocking. Graham in a bit of open space, but he's got to get rid of it. Great work by Rogers. Unbelievable work, and that's how they've been working hard all day now. He you really like the last works. soccer goal? You'll love this. Kepler got a finger to the ball. This is off the ground. Could be close. It could be good. It's there. Fighting hard, and boy, did they have to fight uh, last weekend as well because uh, it looked at one stage as if the whole season was starting to slip away from Richmond, and of course, a number of other controversial incidents that happened in the preceding couple of weeks there. But a big win over Hawthorne has seen the Tigers back in business. And Robert Walls, the coach of Richmond, uh, is with us on Football Feedback. And Robert, nice to have you on the show this week rather than where you were last week. Well, it's better to be here, Eddie, than uh, at the uh, AFL headquarters, I can assure you. Rob, uh, how, what about all that? Did that affect you? Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the whole situation. Situation. Um, it seemed right from the word go when you were cited by the uh, investigation officer that you would go down in some form just to almost pacify the uh, the crowd, if you like, to stop uh, you know any melees happening in the race going off the ground. Uh, did you feel that you were always going to be an example going up? I thought so. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Um, look, it, it, it was something uh, in today's modern age of uh, being politically correct and uh, and so on. Uh, I, I have no complaints, you know, that's the way that, that, that life's going and uh, football changes as life changes and, and that's one of the changes that I as a coach uh, will have to accept. Uh, there was nothing really major involved in it I felt but at the same time, uh, you know, what happened happened and there are no hard feelings between me, Neil Baum, Darren Cowell, Melbourne Football Club, Richmond Football Club and I think that's the most important thing. And when the $5,000 fine was announced, what's 5000 was it, by the Tribunal, what was your reaction? I accepted, expected that or too much? You know, what did you, what was the first thought? Well, I think out? it's too much, but at the same time, uh, it didn't surprise me no. that it was that amount. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, probably wouldn't have done you any harm at the club level though, Robert, uh, just to show that you were there fighting, you know, the, the, the fight for the Tigers, particularly being a Carlton man and given the fact that, uh, you know, the Richmond fans got long memories of you giving them plenty when you're at Carlton as a player, but uh, it's certainly from, from that sort of thing, I know uh, Richmond supporters have come up to me and said how rapt they were that you really you know, flew the flag for the for the boys. Well, that that came after uh, the incident. It certainly wasn't planned, but I must admit uh, th there was some nice letters received through the week from Richmond supporters, you know, so, sort of thanking me for sticking up for the players. But you know, as a coach, you you love your players and you look after them and uh, you want to you want to do the right thing by them. So uh, it, it was easy for me to uh, stick up for for Chris Nash. Do you regret that, that doing it though? Just I know it was prompt you but just having any conversation at all with an opposition player I do regret uh, I do regret saying what I said to a young player I, th I thought that really I was out of line doing that mm -hmm. and and I, uh, I apologized to Darren at the end of the night uh, it was you know a spur of the moment and nothing was planned but um, particularly to a young player I don't mm -hmm. think we really should do that we should set a better example to any player they were not uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I think there are some players who you, you would like to uh, perhaps give a, a little bit of a, a verbal spray to, but 
as I said, that's been going on for a long, long time. Like Terry mm. Danaher, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was in the grand final. Oh, okay. The rules are off. The rules are off. Yeah. <laughs> no rules in the grand final. Um, Robert, just the, the initial question I, I've started to asking you and then drifted off somewhere else. I don't know where I was going there for a second, but uh, did it affect you much? Because we've got a bit of table show in a few months' time of you coming out of the tribunal and, uh, you know, the, the media get up close and they do invade your, your space at time and we've all been guilty of that in the media as well as the, in the heat of uh, the battle, if you like, trying to get the story up. Uh, how much of an invasion had, had, had the whole drama been over the two-week period? Oh, look, it, it, it was no problem to me except at the tribunal that night and I was really annoyed because uh, we got there and the, and the press hit us with the lights and the flash bulbs uh, when we got out of the car, went up the lift, that's okay. Uh, every time we walked between the, the rooms and into the tribunal, which was half a dozen times. What about two and piss off? They, they were at us half a dozen times going from one room into the tribunal and then when we left they were at us again. Now I was up there uh, for allegedly, you know, perhaps inciting a riot. The situation they've got there encourages a riot and we at Richmond have sent a letter of protest to the AFL because I believe anybody who goes up should be treated better than what Richmond and Melbourne players were treated on Monday night. Where were they going back to the lift from the tribunal? Was that that? I vision? just walked out of the tribunal door and was walking down the corridor to get into the lift. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like they had open access, the media, and I, you expect them at the uh, lift door, uh, that's okay, but everywhere we went for five hours we had that, and I don't reckon that's right. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Robert, from a media point of view, and I'm actually on the committee of the AFL Media Association, and uh, I've always found it's, it's quite undignified for all concerned in that situation and that the AFL need to mm. organise a, a procedure. Uh, OK, it's a professional game, we all know if you're up, you're going into the tribunal, you're going to give you a case. I mean, I, I wouldn't think that you would have any problem coming out after that and in a organised setting saying what you had to say and then that's it, game set, match, you go home, media go home with their story, everyone's happy. No doubt about that, you know, just have a room and, uh, and answer questions for five minutes, get it over and done with, uh, but it was a rabble there the other night. Yeah, the yeah. problem is, I mean, the AFL say you can't make any con comment at all about what's happened in the tribunal, but sort of, that's probably the problem, isn't it? It's after trying to catch a grab from, uh, from a person involved at the tribunal as they're leaving. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel for these fellas, like they're under instructions to get what you can, but yeah. they were there for five hours and uh, I just thought it was unsatisfactory for, from both parties. Yeah, well there's certainly something should be done f from that and it's uh, interesting that Richmond have sent in a letter and uh, let's hope the AFL and the AFL Media Association and the clubs get together and, and work it out because it's something that the media haven't been a big rep for over the years. I mean I've always found it pretty undignified chasing people down the street, mm -hmm. particularly when you generally know them and get on quite well with them. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we've made a lot of steps forward in the AFL in, in so many promotional areas of our game, the game itself, and that's one area we can certainly do better at. All right, well, uh, just to show that Robert Walls has got a sense of humour when he is confronted by the media, here's a little bit of his uh, post-match interview after the game at the weekend where he's asked about his new runner. You hit the runner game today, Robert? Oh, he got a few blasts. <laughs> <laughs> is every no, game, he did all right. Is every game to an extent? So, Rob Bourbon, it's not all... Uh, all the fierceness with the media after the game. You've always been one of the, the more accessible guys as well, haven't you? You've oh, tried to I, I think the longer you're in it, the more you realise that you know, both sides have a job to do and you do try to cooperate, no doubt about that. Did you learn much about the media when you had that spell in the media after uh, Carlton? I certainly did. I had uh, 18 months in it and uh, I'll never forget the first time I went into the press box. Um, I walked in, the media saw me and I think they all thought, what's going to happen here? <laughs> no one spoke to me, I didn't speak to anyone. And uh, six weeks later, I got to know them as people, uh, not fellows who wanted a story every time you met them, and, and they got to know me as a, as a person other than a football coach. And it was one of the best things that, that happened. All right, well, let's move on now and talk about the Tigers and their advancement into the final eight, which, of course, happened against Hawthorne on Saturday at Optus Oval. And two players who have really lifted in the uh, last uh, part of the, the season, or all year, really, have been Mark Marinda and also Chris Bond, who's been a fantastic player for you, Robert. Oh, Chris Bond played a great game uh, Saturday. He, uh, I thought he was our best player. And uh, Mark Miranda, his last couple of weeks, uh, he's come back to some very good form. He's had a good season overall, Miranda. And uh, both of them midfield players who can play half-back, half-forward or in the middle. And uh, along with Wayne Campbell, Broderick, Prescott, who was there for a while. Uh, we're starting to get a, a fair number of players who we can use in the midfield. 
And Chris Bond uh, essentially has sort of came through the last couple of years as more the one-on-one -on -one type on baller, but you've been using him sometimes in the forward line as a goal kicker. He's a bit more versatile this year. You yes. Yeah, well, Chris, is, uh, he's kicked around 20 goals this year, which uh, is, you know, is certainly a handy contribution. And uh, I, I just think he's got more strings to his bow than being a tagger. And uh, he can play attacking and defensive roles. And, you know, he enjoys his run on the forward line. And uh, he's, you know, to have a, have a player who can come up and kick 20-plus goals is a real bonus for us. Do you think it's also, as a player, it's hard to play that really one-on-one -on -one role year after year for a, hand, you know, for a few years? Yeah, I do. I think that, uh, you know, the, the real tight tagging jobs that you give players, I think to give them week in, week out, you can... Uh, you can really wear a player down mm -hmm. and I find that you know a lot of clubs now and, and we, we're certainly one we share that load we might have one or two players that we specifically want to really tag mm. and uh, we'll, we often share that over three or four players for the course of the game. Mm. It's interesting you say that Robert we're going to look at a couple of bits of vision here of uh, Brennan Gale and uh, this week of well, last week he played up forward and uh, was a far more assured uh, Benny Gale going for the ball particularly overhead and pulling in some big marks We'll show in a few moments' time, uh, Benny playing it up back against uh, Essen where he dropped a couple of uh, pods. Uh, is that a situation where some players you found play better at, uh, up forward rather than at, at the back half? Well, we really had to put Benny into the back line because uh, we had Turner and Bullis missing for most of the year. Mm. And uh, as a result, we had Gasper and Burke playing the key positions. And they're really not big enough to do that week in, week out. So Benny went back. He did some good jobs. He played on Stuart Lowe, Steve Kernahan and uh, Sav Rocker. And I think the last couple of weeks in the back line, he started to struggle a little. Uh, he's basically a marking player and I think at, at times in the back line he, he wasn't sure whether he should mark or spoil whereas in the forward line well there's no doubt about it you just go for all the marks you can and he kicked uh, four goals took 11 or 12 marks in this particular game and there was a real steely resolve about him before the game I knew that he would play well because he was determined to make amends from the week before. Uh, you mentioned Gasper he seems like to has been a really good pick up from the games I've seen this year He's played really well, Lee. He's, he's been a regular for us at fullback. He's, three times he's played on Jason Dunstall this year, had a practice match and two league games. Mm. And uh, he's played on uh, you know, all the good full forwards. And when he came to us, he'd only played 22 or 23 AFL games. So he's, he's very young and still learning. But uh, we've been absolutely delighted with Darren Gasper's form. And, and you usually want Coup to feed his one game and he, the, his athleticism didn't suffer by comparison. No, game. well look, in an ideal world, we'd have Turner at full back and we'd play Gasper out on a half back flank, even a wing, mm. and uh, some you know on ball rolls with tall players. Mm. Robert, there's always talk about Richmond last year playing on a motion and all that sort of thing. Do you think you're, you're better than that? I think we are. I'm sure we are. I have no doubt that the team last year and the year before when they uh, started to win games and the crowd support grew and grew that there was a lot of emotion and I think you, that can carry you only so far and after that it's got to be ability, uh, certainly buoyed up by the emotion of the crowd but uh, I think there's, there's, there's enough talent in that team that uh, they can win without crowd support. Mind you, we, we love the crowd support that uh, the Tigers get. And I read you took the punt and got into the contesting work last week. I mean, is that a result of feeling that that uh, hardness the ball or whatever the terms we want to use wasn't quite up to the upper limits? Yes, it, it was the first time that we'd done really hard what what um, I call you know, the stuff that we did 10 years ago yeah. every week, but yeah. nowadays, you know, the players and, and the expectations are you don't do mm. that. And uh, it was sort of an old fashioned hard slog training night where a few of the boys were crook and uh, there were a few bruises and bloodied heads and so on. And it, I just felt it was time that we needed to do that. And uh, the really amazing thing and interesting thing was several players said to me after training, Hey, we should do that every second week. Mm. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Just mm. the changing, just evolves all the time, doesn't it? It does. Well, it was uh, successful before sorry, it goes on. Yeah. I mean, you won the game, but did that part of the game sort of pick up that much from what it did in the, probably the second half against Eston when it wasn't so good? Yeah, we, we fell away in that second half against Eston and, and really didn't have much uh, contest on them. And, mm. and we were determined to you know get the tackles on, put the shepherds on and uh, hit hard when it was our turn mm. to, to hit. And uh, I think the players felt good about that with their preparation. All right, well, the Tigers are back in the eight. The Hawks have dropped out.